in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed I need us to be on the same a level playing ground tonight um, because I know that many of us come from different uh, I don't mean to be insulted but different religions some of us and even in Christianity we come from different sects with different perspectives about God and I understand that there are many people who do not accept the Holy Spirit as a person they accept him as an influence they accept him as, um, um, in fact, some believe that he's one of the angelic cadres. He's not. I have proven it to us. And then the Bible clearly tells us again that the Holy Spirit is God. Amen. So let's deal with the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I want you to really pay attention because this tonight's teaching will be examining the need, the advantage, the benefit and the operation of the holy spirit in our lives now that we have agreed that he's a person sent from god we have to examine why is he such a big deal because let me tell you something there are many believers who think discussing about the holy spirit is inaccurate you know you hear them say look it is jesus we want to know he's the one who died for our sins what is all this idea about the holy spirit is jesus we want to know and um, you know they make it look as though the teaching of the holy spirit is some kind of occultic movement and it is important for us to understand his ministry in our life john chapter 16 for our text tonight let's look at the book of john chapter 16 jesus is teaching the disciples here and um, in the chapter before he began to introduce them to the personality of the holy spirit and then he went further to let them know the things that he would be doing his ministry let's read from verse 7 john chapter 16 from verse 7 we're reading down um, to 15, 7 to 15, quite a long reading. Ready? Nevertheless, okay, I tell you the truth. It is what? Expedient. The word expedient is advantageous to your own advantage. For you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter notice all the names that he's used because his names are also a representation of his operation and his ministry it's in the character of god to name things according to their usage um house people do a lot of that they name people based on what they do so you can you don't need to ask what the person is doing they can name him by his occupation or profession we do that a lot in the north this is where that this whole idea came from so when he's called the comforter that introduces a dimension of his ministry the comforter will not come to you but if i depart i will send him to you we're reading down to 15 and when he is come he will reprove the world of sin righteousness and judgment verse 9 of sin because they believe not on me of righteousness because i go to my father and ye see me no more of judgment because the prince of this world is judged i have yet many things to say unto you but ye cannot bear them now now that's that's a very interesting we can stop there and spend all the night please go back to verse 12 it says ye cannot bear them now this is very powerful i'm, I'm coming to that point ye cannot bear them now does not mean they are too heavy for you 
your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit the capacity to understand spiritual things has not been activated that means the word you cannot bear them means it will not be profitable to you if i attempt to explain it to you are we together now because the natural man cannot receive the things of the spirit nor can he understand them they are spiritually discerned are we together how be it next verse when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into how many truth he will guide you into the word sanctify them by thy truth thy word is truth so he will guide you into all truth for he shall speak he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come he shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine and shall show it to you 15 all things that the father hath are mine therefore said i that he shall take of mine and shall show it to you praise the lord the holy spirit in as much as it is important for us to know he's a person we must be able to know that he was sent by god to accomplish specific things in the earth the Holy Spirit's ministry cuts across creation and humans. He is not limited just to human beings. You have to understand this. The ministry of the Holy Spirit, Miles Munro, Dr. Miles Munro calls him the governor of the earth. How powerful a description. Are we together now? Not the governor of men. The Holy Spirit's ministry. For many of us, even among the charismatics, we have limited the ministry of the holy spirit to just men and so we feel that the holy spirit has no relevance in culture the holy spirit has no relevance to plants and animals the holy spirit has no relevance to creation that's not true when you read genesis chapter one he was the very force his first manifestation was not as a helper of man are we together now it was his presence representing the power of god that brought order and dexterity to creation i want you to know the bible says he uphold thing he upholds all things by the word of his power the holy spirit is the mystery that holds creation together you have to realize this he's not just um one force that was sent to men and so if you are not a man you are not relevant no 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 we see the holy spirit's ministry finding expression even in animals donkeys spoke that's a manifestation of the power of the holy spirit rods bordered that's a manifestation of the power of the holy spirit a rod turned to a serpent and back again water parted all of these things we see his power the might of the spirit of god demonstrated all through creation so i want us to know that the relevance of the holy spirit cuts across culture cuts across animate and inanimate things the relevance of the holy spirit cuts across civilization whether the 18th 19th 20th 21st century and whatever it is the relevance of the holy spirit cuts across dispensations dispensations when you realize this the holy spirit does not become he no longer becomes an issue of christians please listen the holy spirit is not just on earth for christians the holy spirit is god he is the spirit of god as i'm going to be teaching you the holy spirit has a ministry to creation he has a ministry in our world today cosmos the social system the holy spirit has a ministry to unbelievers the holy spirit has a ministry to believers are we together now so regardless of what category you find yourself you need the person and the ministry of the holy spirit say amen because if we do not understand some of these things we can feel the holy spirit is a nuisance and he's only needed by those who want to heal the sick that's the ideology many people receive 
So every time we talk about the Holy Spirit, we leave him to pastors and apostles and prophets and all those who want to be part of ministry as we know. I'm a businessman, I don't need him. I'm a politician, I don't need him. I'm a career person, I don't need him. That's a fallacy. The Holy Spirit is needed for life and godliness he is the life of god he is the power of god ignoring the holy spirit and any aspect of his ministry will cost you your effectiveness everyone say i need him jesus the model of the church the very son of the living god the firstborn among we the begotten jesus was helpless on the earth the holy spirit was required to get mary pregnant he played the fatherly role of mary the holy spirit was required are we together now in in the the growth and the understanding of jesus as he grew in wisdom statue the holy spirit was responsible for his empowerment the holy spirit was responsible for that invincible and flawless life that jesus lived the Holy Spirit was responsible for supplying the grace for his passion. The Holy Spirit was responsible for his resurrection. The Holy Spirit was responsible for his ascension. Responsible for the birthing. The Holy Spirit is the mother that birthed the church. We can never ignore his ministry and prosper. Listen to me please. Whether you are Presbyterian whether you are an atheist whether you are a muslim christian buddhist whatever religion whether you are you are a christian catholic pentecostal charismatic orthodox you know whatever it is i want you to know that the holy spirit please come the holy spirit was not sent as a choice for christians no the holy spirit is god's gift to earth god's gift to humanity regardless whether you are a sinner he has a ministry in your life whether you are born again he has a ministry in your life in business in ministry as we call it fivefold whatever it is we have ignored his ministry in fact in fact many believers do not doubt that there is an existence of such a personality called the holy spirit you will seldom find people argue with you about the existence of such a personality however in fact many have even supposedly received him it's one thing to receive the holy spirit but it's another thing for his ministry to be activated in your life that you have received the holy spirit and you are even praying in tongues does not necessarily mean his ministry has been activated in your life are we together help me with this bottle of water watch this give it to me i have received this water is that true but this water was designed to accomplish specific things in me quench my thirst help me become healthy now if i keep holding this bottle for a long time i am not in doubt that there is such a possibility i know i'm feeling it i hold this bottle so if you talk about the bottle i say wow yes i hold it i'm a possessor of it but i'm not a benefactor of the advantage the possibilities that this bottle could bring i can die of thirst yet i am holding a bottle of purified water that can quench my thirst so don't be caught up with this self pride and arrogance that i know him after all the name of my church is holy spirit uh, maybe assembly or something and you convince yourself that because you mention his name and talk about him so much it means you know him no thank you the advantage that were designed were designed to take advantage of his person and his ministry not his person alone an awareness of you if this guy is a um what do we call it now let's assume that this guy is a very good driver being aware that he's a good driver is wonderful but that does not profit me if this guy now drives me then i am enjoying his ministry brothers and sisters thank you very much many of us seated here and listening to me following online have not maximized the ministry of the holy spirit we have not even allowed him 
we have not allowed him and i'll be showing you shortly there are specific things the holy spirit was sent to achieve in our lives i won't talk so much about his ministry to creation my focus especially in this series is on men we have been discussing the issue of men we really want to understand the dynamics of triumph and we're examining the ministry of the holy spirit with respect to men the holy spirit has a twofold assignment please write with respect to his ministry to men he has a twofold assignment the assignment of the holy spirit to men is twofold number one his ministry to unbelievers that's the starting point of his encounter with men his ministry to unbelievers unbelievers those who are yet to encounter christ those who are yet to surrender their hearts to his lordship he has a ministry to them and then number two his ministry to believers or the church the ecclesia the holy spirit has a ministry to the body of christ not just to believers to the body because believers are part of that body so he has a ministry to unbelievers and then he has a ministry to believers the church the bride of christ several things the bible tells us that the holy spirit would do in the life of unbelievers let's look at them very quickly john 15 26 to 27 john 15 26 to 27 the bible says when the comforter is come listen jesus is teaching here whom i will send unto you from the father even the spirit of truth which proceeded from the father what will he do he shall what testify testify like a witness to my reality remember we discussed the last time that the holy spirit makes jesus real there is no amount of oratory there is no amount of audiovisual that is capable of making jesus real to a man no amount of jesus film no amount of um what do we call it uh, visual drawings that can attempt to paint it can just capture emotionally but it it cannot reveal jesus the holy spirit is the one who testifies of jesus are we together now next verse 27 and ye also sh shall bear witness because ye have ye have been with me from the beginning jesus is saying the holy spirit will bear witness to unbelievers and just like him that will be for next week you will also end up being like him to men witnesses are we together the faithful witness is not a man he's the spirit of god he's called the faithful witness unbending the faithful witness testifying of him when you see people convicted give us john 6 44 when you see jesus come alive to people brothers and sisters listen the reason why it is not difficult for us to believe in jesus huh, is because we were born in a religious environment and so although we had not surrendered completely to him we were in an environment that seemed to appreciate his reality so it was not very difficult to switch are we together but if you were born a buddhist an atheist a non-christian or your father was involved in all kinds of um extreme witchcraft you will realize that it takes the power of the holy spirit to make jesus real why will you walk up to me and just tell me i am going to die i'm going to perish i should hand over my life to someone called jesus what is so special about him i'm already rich i'm already healthy i already live in a mansion i already live with all kinds of luxurious things why do i need jesus it's very easy in africa for people to receive jesus because our economy has already tilted us to uh, the point where we need a savior so it's very logical the moment you propose jesus and what he can do it makes a lot of sense to a man who is hungry but you see when you go around the world and meet men in their arrogance who have built empires without him what exactly 
should make a multi-millionaire what exactly should make a man who is a professor per excellence what exactly should make a man listen to you enough to respond to an altar call it takes the holy spirit it's not just good talk it's not just evangelism look at what he says here no man can come to me except the father and i told you there are two, two dimensions there is the father in heaven abba the source and sustainer residing in the heavens are we together the first person of the godhead then there is the father in me the holy spirit are we together now he says no man can come to me except the father which had sent me draw him and i will raise him up on the last day no man please hear me if you have ever given your life to jesus christ it never happened just by your willpower alone uh -uh. the holy spirit was there it's unfortunate right now we organize crusades without him emotional crusades we share tracts we put jesus film at the end of it people cry you see them crying you think before you make the altar call they should come and lie down while you are making the altar call they are crying and they are still sitting down looking at you that's to tell you that this thing um, is the same thing that would happen to them if they watched an Indian film are we together no man can come to me no man has the power to be so convinced just by the eloquence of men no your words are not articulate enough to cause a man who is 50 years in his mind as an atheist has written all kinds of scientific propositions disproving the existence of God and then you claim to speak to him in 20 minutes and have him bend down on his knees no it takes more than just intelligence it takes the power of the Holy Spirit I am it never ceases to amaze me the sermon of Peter have you read Acts chapter 2 what a boring sermon what a disjointed sermon I've been teaching our school of ministry homiletics for five years I've been teaching them how to preach and I understand certain things that should be contained in a good message to make sense Peter's message had only two of that five you're meeting a lot of people and then telling them some history that doesn't make sense wasting their time and then at the end i thought they would say what a boring man you gathered us here to waste our time the bible says they were caught to the heart that's not the excellency of speech that's the power of god are we together the holy spirit convicts and draws the heart of unbelievers to jesus when you read john 16 from verse 7 it says that when he the spirit of truth is come please give it to us john 16 verse 7 when the spirit of truth is come he says he will reprove the world the world of unbelievers of three things of sin righteousness judgment go to verse um yes thank you verse 8 when he is come he will reprove the world of sin righteousness and judgment listen no man has the power to create conviction in men every man that tries to convict men brings condemnation to men are we together now it is not given to man to bring conviction no you can only partner with him it is the holy spirit who can convict a man brothers and sisters men are arrogant the fallen nature designed men that way when a man kneels down to the lordship of christ especially when he's an accomplished man then it was the power of the holy spirit are we together now when i make altar calls i am surprised sometimes i see the people coming out you know that he must have taken god to bring these people out they are even surprised as they are coming out what am i doing here the holy spirit how many pastors how many evangelists do all kinds of theological dissertations and they refuse his ministry they finish preaching and they call and people come out while you are praying the prayer somebody is pinching someone and say the camera is capturing us and they are laughing at the end of it you say amen and then you count the number of people and after 10 years we say we have won 1 million people to christ 
the convicting power Ben Hinn shared something very powerful about the Holy Spirit that blessed me watch this without the Holy Spirit miracles will not change people <laughs> the nation of Israel saw more miracles than we will see combined in our generation yet yet the Bible called them a stiff necked people when Jesus walked on earth John 20 tells us many more miracles did Jesus in the presence of his disciples which were not documented in this book so there are many more miracles we only know he walked on water because it was recorded there were many other miracles Jesus did but the Bible says when he resurrected some doubted how do you doubt a man who is this invincible he died Lazarus died he brought Lazarus back to life the son of the widow at Nain brought her back to life the daughter of the centurion brought her back to life made five loaves and two fish to feed five thousand men aside women and children walked on water had a, a harvest of fish without any kind of assistance yet the people doubted him when jesus died they all ran away when he resurrected they did not even believe thomas said no way i will have to see him and put my hand in his hands and his side why the holy spirit was not given to them the holy spirit it is possible don't forget that jesus sent the 12 and the 70 all together they went out to go and do evangelism they themselves said even the demons brothers and sisters when a demon bows to you that's like the apex of a demonstration of spiritual power yet they doubted Jesus they doubted the life of God you can go to theology school without the Holy Spirit preach for many years and one day hang yourself and say I don't believe this have you seen people after several years of preaching who just look at this I once saw a book I didn't read it of a man who was once a Christian and then I think he refused to be a Christian and he said it's nonsense he said there are many inconsistencies in the Bible and frankly speaking physically when you look at what he's saying he brought a lot of logical things from a historical perspective from an archaeological perspective from even a logical perspective from a prophetic perspective brought all these things together and just said Christians are wasting their time this is complete nonsense we have been as indoctrinated as whatever produce the book this is somebody who was once in Christ. Hmm. Are we together? Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot truly experience the reality of Jesus. You will be claiming he's real to you. It is the absence of the ministry of the Holy Spirit that makes people to stand and sing hallelujah. And all of a sudden when things go wrong, they just go to a herbalist. And they say after all it doesn't matter every power belongs to god when you see people talk like that they are not enjoying the ministry of the holy spirit you join a charm come to church and receive prophecy and then add another broomstick that they gave you in one coven mix everything and say it's just different ways of manifesting the power of god no sir no sir now i'm talking to africa some of us here our parents it's amazing there are pastors who love god they are not fake but the ministry of the holy spirit is not in them the moment especially when people get sick you see people bringing all kinds of alternatives they tell you they're in christ and you look at what they are doing they say no 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 the guy is not exactly a herbalist he's just gifted by who everybody is influenced by a spirit Are we together now very very important what is his ministry to unbelievers conviction and recognition of the need for Jesus what is his ministry to unbelievers conviction and recognition of the need for Jesus that's his assignment to unbelievers he has the exclusive ministry of bringing conviction 
supernatural conviction like some of you now are being convicted supernaturally is very supernatural is the, there's no there's no physical logic to it this is something that is entirely supernatural can bring a man to his knees to embrace Jesus Saul of Tarsus was on his way to Damascus a man who was so hardened you will imagine when they were killing the Matthias Stephen it was it was Saul that sat down and they kept their clothes at his feet yet he later became the greatest one of the greatest of the apostles listen how we need the truth about Jesus to spread across our families to spread across territory the issue of introducing Jesus to people listen 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 I don't like giving it religious names because we have abused religious names if I say evangelism now I know what comes to your mind a tract and people two by two strolling and knocking someone's door that's wonderful that's an aspect of evangelism but this is if you see introducing Jesus to creation is a matter of life and death it's not an option by a sect to increase their membership no Jesus is the answer for the world today you know that song above him there's no other Jesus is the way Jesus is the answer for the world today above him there's no other Jesus is the way how we need everyone around us saved how we need do you know most of the confusion in our society is because men are governed by an ideology that is outside of the Christ look at the way heaven is total submission to the Lordship of the Christ look at the dexterity and the order our world our government our politicians our business people have no respect and recognition for Jesus the issue of him of opening up the hearts of men to receive Jesus is not an activity for preachers no the Holy Spirit has a ministry the first and primary way that the earth will be full of the knowledge of the glory of Christ is not building of luxurious structures and having multi-millionaires spread across a church the first thing is the establishment of the Lordship of Christ across the hearts of men number one first things first I don't care how rich a church becomes I don't care how prosperous I don't care how educated a people become if Jesus is not institutionalized in an environment there is trouble when Ebola broke out something that is a temporary thing governments came together to drive it out because they perceived it to be a threat Jesuslessness is a threat is a threat to humanity a life truly without Jesus please hear me this is not an initiation into a Christian's religion There's nothing as terrible as a life that does not acknowledge Jesus. As we are seated here, there are many of our loved ones who are not saved. Completely not saved. They laugh at you every time you mention, ah, don't bring any Jesus in please. I'm not a small child. We did all those things so when we were young. You hear them say, now that we are old, we are facing life intelligently. Jesus has been tagged a nuisance to civilization you mention him and you see the disdain especially on young people you mention jesus is as if you mention unemployment you mention jesus as if you mention barrenness who indoctrinated us who pushed away the ministry of the holy spirit such that we cannot even partner with him to allow men listen the holy spirit is still on earth today carrying out a massive campaign on unbelievers what is he doing convicting them that's why you find out that right now 
find out what is happening across the world especially the Middle East mighty manifestations of Jesus people having encounters of Jesus since we are not going to be serious since we are more interested in making money since we are more interested in having building empires and being called apostles and prophets the Holy Spirit himself engineering conversions in whole families without the assistance of a single individual he said if you will not praise me I will raise up stones everybody say conviction say it again conviction say recognition do you know do you know that Saul was not part of those who walked with Jesus Christ yes he was a Pharisee but he was not part of those who walked with Jesus Christ but the moment he encountered Jesus he called him Lord see for those of you who have had visionary encounters let me tell you something in fact any kind of encounter if it is the Holy Spirit that introduces Jesus to you you must acknowledge him as Lord if it's a preacher that introduced Jesus to you without the assistance of the Holy Spirit you may just see him as an intelligent historian one of the many and you will clap for him every religion believes in Jesus but as what as what hallelujah say conviction we need to allow the Holy Spirit step into our homes and change our loved ones step into our offices and change people step into governments of nations the decadence that is eating up society is as a result of this exclusion thing Holy Spirit remain in church his first ministry is not to throw people under the anointing no his first ministry to men is to introduce Jesus to them he makes Jesus real although never seen him we believe him why the Holy Spirit the faithful witness the faithful witness have you ever seen him to believe him how can you be this convinced the Spirit of God he makes Jesus real without the Holy Spirit an unbeliever can even come out and recite salvation prayer and not be born again hallelujah the saints and the angels bow the redeemed worship you now holy 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 are you lord holy 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 are you lord powerful song holy 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 are you lord and the angels bow the redeemed worship you now holy 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 are you lord i'd like us to pray one minute and say holy spirit i give you access to every unbeliever in my life i allow you step into my home step into my office are we praying koinonia holy spirit my village is in need of your touch holy spirit my office is in need of your touch holy spirit my campus is in need of your touch holy spirit my environment nigeria is in need of your touch holy spirit africa is in need of your touch holy spirit my people are in need of your touch bring conviction bring conviction bring conviction bring conviction bring conviction to my father bring conviction to my mother bring conviction to my sisters bring conviction to my brothers are you praying lord i'm tired of talking to them every time and they insult me i've been doing it without you 
but holy spirit visit them yourself you are the only one who can make jesus real the way my father is no preacher can lead him to christ he needs you by himself the way my unbelieving brother is they need you lift your voice and pray we are talking about the holy spirit here hallelujah listen let me teach you something about intercession for souls when you are praying for souls don't just pray blindly oh god save them no cry for an encounter with them and the spirit of god it's a collision one person must give up if it's the holy spirit no 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 you can't hit the holy spirit and it goes back it's a joke if the holy spirit comes it will swallow up every stubbornness it was here some years ago while i was teaching on the reality of heaven and hell one person who i think he was an ustas or something like that had read arabic was sitting in the overflow outside i don't know how the, i'm sure just for curiosity just came to sit down and listen and while i was speaking all of a sudden he said the moment i was speaking it's as if outside just became blood and everywhere just vanished and there he was standing alone with jesus the son of the living god while koinonia was going on that guy broke down gave his life to christ god filled with the holy spirit now that's the holy spirit at work please listen many of us are suffering today because the heads of our home have thrown him out so he can come in he can come into your life but not your home because the doorway the priest of the house has willingly kicked him out many of our fathers don't recognize him many of our mothers don't recognize him you talk about him oh, please don't bring all those church church garbages you need to pray and say holy spirit you are the testifier of jesus you are the testifier of jesus i'll never forget one of the most awesome testimonies that we've had in this ministry one of our ladies uh, long before she left it was a non-christian family everyone then she was the first to get born again and kept growing and building and then gradually i think it was her mom who later got born again supernaturally a non-christian family not just a few people and then gradually i think her younger brother or there about got born again everyone got born again and it was the dad that was left he was angry already persecuting them criticizing them you know you know what i'm talking about withdrawal of benefits etc etc and then one time i would never forget one night we're preparing to go for prayers and this lady comes to me crying and saying the lord has done it god is faithful what happened i don't know what made the father to meander into living faith fire fell on his head that day do you know the holy spirit has a way of navigating a man who has no business going for a crusade he will just be passing and say what who is this guy shouting and stand there and that's it that's the end of it do you believe what i'm sharing with you his ministry to unbelievers if you know this never never get rid of anyone the holy spirit has not given up on are you hearing some of us have our brothers our sisters our loved ones they smoke around they snuff everything as stubborn as whatever you give them a bible they sell it and use the money to drink all kinds of things when the holy spirit meets them one day you will just see that gentleman who used to dress like a thief holding his bible and saying are we not going for koinonia and you say no no oh it will happen oh it will happen in the name of jesus why are you surprised have you forgotten how you used to be have you forgotten so soon that the holy spirit can convict men number two quickly his ministry to believers and i want to dwell here a little and then The Holy Spirit has a very extensive ministry to believers. 
who are believers recipients of the life and the power of god recipients of the grace and the mercy of god those who have been redeemed partakers of his divine nature now write this down please give us second corinthians 13 verse 14 and then philippians chapter 2 verse 1 second corinthians 13 14 a popular scripture in the body of christ the ministry of the holy spirit in a believer is primarily carried out through communion fellowship please understand this the ministry of the holy spirit in the life of a believer the principal channel for the holy spirit manifesting his ministry and trust me i know what i'm talking about the holy spirit's the chiefest way that he manifests his ministry in a believer is true communion please give us amplified if we can find it the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and then he says and the presence and fellowship the communion the sharing together the participation in and then King James says of the Holy Spirit be with you amen so there is a fellowship say fellowship there is a communion say communion without the communion of the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit cannot find his ministry cannot find expression to a believer what is communion fellowship what is communion oneness are we together now let me teach you something listen um, I know you're writing can I use you again thank you there is the dimension of the ministry of the Holy Spirit in you there is the dimension of the ministry of the Holy Spirit with you Alos Paracletos one who is called to walk an extension of the ministry of Jesus are we together now both are very important but communion is the key communion intimacy koinonia the word are we together that participation fellowship a recognition of himself in your life and then that allowance creating the atmosphere your assignment in terms of your partnership with the holy spirit as far as communion is concerned is to create the atmosphere create the atmosphere create the atmosphere for communion to be possible create the atmosphere for fellowship communion does not happen anywhere and anyhow there is an atmosphere there is a state of being there is a state of surrender that can cause communion to be a possibility in the life of a person thank you hallelujah many of us fail to create that atmosphere every other thing that i'm going to be listing here is communion dependent is fellowship dependent if you do not have what the bible calls the fellowship of the spirit it is impossible to access these other dimensions of his ministry fellowship philippians chapter 2 verse 1 philippians chapter 2 verse 1 it says if there be therefore any consolation in christ if any comfort of love then it says if any fellowship there is such a thing as the fellowship of the spirit fellowship of the spirit fellowship of the spirit that introduces you to a lot of other things when i sat down i watched ejimi and his dear daughter he was busy talking with her that's fellowship communion koinonia and then after a while of conversation she left with his phone i think he put a game for her and she was happily going and i said that's the fringe benefit of communion it started with her coming to him they were discussing i did not know and then as a result she had access many of us want to access the riches of christ the blessings of christ but we ignore the place of communion the platform upon which the ministry of the holy spirit is manifested in the life of a believer is not prayer is not fasting is communion prayer is a subset of fellowship 
Are we together now? Hmm. Fellowship. So what is the first ministry of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer? Let's hurry up. Number one. Write it down please. The first assignment of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer is activation of his spiritual senses. Activation of his spiritual senses. A believer is one who has already received the life of God. When the Holy Spirit comes into the life of a believer, his first assignment is activation of your spiritual senses. The Bible calls it being alive to Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14, please. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14. Very popular scripture. The Bible says, read, please, everyone is projected. One to read. But the natural man received not the things of the Spirit of God. Why? For they are what? Foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Let me explain to you what that means. The natural man, not just a carnal man, the natural man one who is alienated from anything christ among other things responds to his environment only based on his sensory perception are we together so his decisions are made from the impulses around him the limit of his interaction is just a three-dimensional realm the natural man the bible says for such a person his organs of interaction with spiritual realities are deadened he cannot understand spiritual things because they are not scientific spiritual things are not scientific spiritual things are not philosophical they are spiritual so your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit must be heightened and activated for it to make sense it does not make sense to drop a prayer request on the ground and dance around it a natural man will tell you that stupidity it does not make sense to write your problems on a prayer request and come and drop it at the altar have a man lay hands and get up smiling it does not make sense to believe something you have not seen and start taking action in advance no the natural man cannot do that in the world they say seeing is believing if i can't see it i shouldn't believe it how in the world do you want somebody whose organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit has not been heightened to believe that someone can stand with a growth a lump a malignant growth cancerous growth and just with a word it disappears no see let me tell you something most people's doubting of god is because the holy spirit has not activated their organs of interaction remember when you used to laugh at praying praying in tongues remember that's what was happening to you you see believers praying and sweating and you say Ay, who lied to these people see you now you are in the same thing happily a forerunner of it how about the bible how about confession to believe that you can communicate things thank you that you can communicate things and then they will come to pass because you opened your mouth and spoke ah, ah. you just sit down in your house and expect a destiny helper to help you who dash monkey banana where will that come from you mean somebody just sits down and comes to bless you all of these things that we teach brothers and sisters are spiritually discerned say after me spiritually discerned why will you ever believe that a man went to the cross for you what if it's a lie was your name on the cross you were not there you were told he went to the cross for you how are you sure it was for you what if he went because he did something wrong and they just created a story to cover up let me tell you how you know the organs your spiritual senses have been activated the things of the spirit no longer become an embarrassment to you you are not ashamed of it some of us still do big manism for spiritual things shout lift your hands and don't fall our hands that's someone whose spiritual senses are deadened does not understand 
you are sick to take the communion what is communion i beg i saw you baking this cake i saw you you even put small wine inside and you are now all of a sudden telling me it's anointed and it can cure please the less less we are and I'm, I'm i'm sorry to say this but even some of us pastors we stand on stage and we bastardize spiritual things we tell people look you you have common sense i mean what is uh, how can you walk around your house in the night prophesying get a police and we laugh over it and make it look as if spiritual things are nonsense If you are not a spiritual man you can't believe that somebody can come with a result that is not working and you lay hands on it and he goes back and check and all of a sudden he finds out it has changed his own cynical people are those who their organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit you saw our mother giving a testimony there are some of you here if journalists will come now you say mama open that leg let's see i don't believe it seeing is believing because many of us believe that an elderly woman at her age like this would come to stand to lie to you cynical about everything i'm showing you the need for the holy spirit in your life this is why you cannot experience speed when they see a young man all of a sudden come you see this gentleman he was he grew up in the village just like you and in one year god has changed his life and changed his level when people see him they say look all these young people it took me 20 years to buy my first car because you are a natural man but this guy has tapped into a supply he knows there is a system in the kingdom are we together now and you look at him and say no job you graduated with third class what are you doing whose head did you cut that you are now buying a car you are even saying you buy a car for your mother how did that happen the natural man cannot receive the things of the spirit how can tithing open the heavens for you this thing is just a gimmick oh men of god use this thing they, they eat people's money and you hear the next time you can know whether people are alive in the spirit by their conversations their conversations are a window to their spirit man so never argue when you want to argue with people find out what level they are first so you don't make a fool of yourself there are people when they talk the keys just to say all right god bless you it's all right you know i'm telling you all these things you are sitting down saying you are hearing god to marry well I'm, this one now you are seeing we're all seeing this is how your elder sister did now she's 40 years you don't know what the elder sister believed but you know the principles of the word are you hearing what i'm saying is God blessing you? Yes. Spiritual man. God gives you an instruction. You finish building a house. And you carry the house. And go and give the house of God. And say they should turn it into a missionary house. Is that normal? No. You have to be spiritual. Are there spiritual people in this place? So why do you argue about miracles? Why do you argue about signs and wonders? Why do you argue about dreams? I call this guy now. I give him a word of knowledge and somebody is watching me. I'm watching if somebody is telling me something. <laughs> is it very easy to act like that? Say I'm a believer. Say I am spiritual. I am alive to God. Say it. I am alive to God yes the natural man i'm showing you the number one assignment of the holy spirit to take us out of that natural state and that carnal state to become spiritually alive all of a sudden you now know that prayer has power all of a sudden you now know that the word of god can direct the course of a man's life all of a sudden you now agree that if i honor my parents my day will be long all of a sudden you now know that it is possible for someone to insult you yet in spite of the insult you can still say god bless you natural people who fight and tear themselves but a spiritual man hallelujah it's a spiritual man that will see his car burning to ashes and while the car is burning he'll go and lock the door and just be dancing 
and he said oh god i think you can't you at least quench it and sell the tire and he said it doesn't make any difference it's just my car is limited but i'm connected to a supply that is infinite i'm not irresponsible i'm only showing the extent of the abundance of the kingdom i represent spiritual man let me tell you how to know you're a spiritual man jesus gave us a test your environment will fight you because they are not used to behaving like that where will the money come from i'm tithing i'm giving god will give me an idea are you are you aware that we are in may and you are saying by december the house will be built please don't be stupid spiritual people if you are here and you find yourself cynical towards spiritual things you are always doubting can god do this it's a sign that you need to cry for your spiritual senses to be activated i remember some years ago someone told me that he doesn't really believe in miracles that he believes that every healing miracle is fake because they have not been able to bring any concrete documentation i told him i said there's no point arguing and I've had the same thing with several preachers around. I told him the day the doctors look at you and say, sir, you have three days to live. That day you will believe in miracle for sure. You know, this one way God helps us to believe him. He just steps back and allows us to struggle with what we think can be him in our lives. When you see how incapacitated you are outside of the spirit, it will make you to embrace him. Thank you. Activation of your spiritual senses number two the second ministry of the holy spirit to a believer this is very important is revelation and understanding of scripture the second ministry listen listen scripture does not help you know the holy spirit the holy spirit helps you understand scripture are we together I am a word addict but i'm going to be correcting many things shortly and i pray that you have the grace and the fortitude to receive it because the way many people are taking their path their journey to spiritual progress they are not going to make progress that way revelation and the understanding of scripture the holy spirit himself is called the spirit of revelation the spirit of understanding when you read isaiah 11 right he's called that in fact paul prayed in ephesians chapter 1 from verse 17 for this cause i paul bow my knees to the father of our lord jesus christ that he may grant unto you the spirit give it to us please ephesians chapter 1 from verse 17 let's see the prayer of paul that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, will give unto you the spirit of what? Wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. It's a spirit. It's not just a desire. There is a dimension of the Holy Spirit that helps men to both have revelation and understanding of scripture. Let me tell you something. If the Holy Spirit, look up please. Lord Jesus help me how do I say this now it is the Holy Spirit that inspired the writing of this remember the last session we discussed that the Holy Spirit is the author of the Bible the Bible did not bring the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit authored the Bible all scripture right was inspired of the Holy Ghost holy men wrote as they were moved led by the Spirit I hope you know that the apostles never had the privilege to hold this document. I hope you know the early church did not go to church with something in their hand called Bibles. Do you know that? When they went around, they did not hold a little book with 66 books. It was their testimony. The testimony of the ministry of the Holy Spirit in their lives that have been documented to help a generation understand the character of God. The purpose of scripture is very clear. He said, ye err not knowing the scripture. These scriptures testify of me. They don't give you power in themselves. The scriptures are a pointer. The end of scripture is an encounter with a person. A person. The spirit of revelation. 
Jesus himself told us that when the Holy Spirit came, he would grant us access to the understanding of scripture. Say understanding of scripture. There are several people. Let me tell you something. Look up please. It is dangerous to study this book or any Christian material without the Holy Spirit. Because you are going to gain an understanding from it. But it may not be the understanding that God intends. And the terrible thing. This is why for many of you who have studied the Bible and studied you know, church history. You will know that the translation of the Bible was done well. But it came with many mistakes. Um, because many of those who translated the Bible did so sadly. From Hebrew, Latin, Greek, Aramaic into english they did not really consult the ministry of the holy spirit seriously many of them just consulted archaeological and theological materials and there are some of the modern translations of the bible we have now are very disturbing very disturbing they are a communication of carnality men attempting to interpret spiritual things in the flesh and so you have all kinds of bibles they remove several things in the Bible that they, fe they feel are an interruption to civilization. They carefully extract certain verses from the Bible. They add certain things that were not there. Revelation of Scripture. Revelation of Scripture. Revelation of Scripture. I will come back to that, but it's sufficient for you to know that if you ever want revelation, the key is to embrace the ministry of the Holy Spirit. When you study scripture with his ministry activated in your life, then you will have understanding, then you will have revelation. Number three, the third ministry of the Holy Spirit to the believer. This is important. Let me spend a few minutes here. Guidance and direction. This is one of his major ministries to the believer guidance and direction john 16 verse 13 john 16 verse 13 please give it to us and then isaiah 30 21 john 16 verse 13 guidance and direction everyone say guidance say it again guidance and direction how be it when he not when it when he the spirit of truth is come what will he do he will guide you into how many truth all truth i know many of us don't believe this let me tell you what it means to guide can i use anybody i've been using you okay to direct is to say move when you get there turn left that's direction so you go on your own all i give you for direction is an information and then you go but this is what guidance is hold my hands let's walk together oh be careful jump this be careful move this way this is guidance the bible says the spirit of truth can guide a young man who is confused no father no mother where do i go oh lord and the spirit of god says hold my hands and watch what i will do i will guide you i will guide you okay you will be in zaria for two years guidance after that you plan to go to London. No, it's not London. It's Akwaibo for one year. Oh God, what am I doing there? Just follow me. Guidance. Many people, pastors, leaders have, have ignored the guidance ministry of the Holy Spirit. Attempting to get direction directly from the Bible without him is hypocrisy and religion. Do you know why? Look at me. Look at me. There is nowhere in the Bible here that is written Apostle Joshua Selman by 2017 you should be in Zaria. It's not written here. The principles of the kingdom I will come there are written but there are times your life requires hands-on customized specific information. This is where he comes in. You see that? The spirit of truth he shall guide you into how many all truth what is all truth does it include ministry does it include your finances please help me does it include your establishment 
why did you leave him in church and you are around trying to look for jobs all by yourself and you never intro you go to submit proposals alone and then we don't pay attention to his ministry i think what is in vogue now is once you are in lagos or abuja about your life will be better and you transport yourself and transport your ignorance to lagos and you're on your own and a city that should bless you punishes you because he's not there with you someone else can be in zamfara led by him what are you doing in zamfara he asked me to come there and he's living like a hero in zamfara please hear me when it comes to guidance you must submit to the leadership of the holy spirit let me show you something isaiah 30 21 isaiah 30 21 read it if you're a christian one to read and thy ears shall hear a word behind thee saying uh-huh this is the way walk ye in it when ye turn to the when you turn to the this is the way walk ye in it uh -uh. if you go about it this way it won't work this is it oh i just want to go and do business uh -uh. go and get a master's lord what do i need for just do it i am directing you uh -huh. he leads me and guides me to the city of Baba. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city of Baba. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. Prophesy. He leads me and guides me to the city of Baba. He leads and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to the place of destiny. Listen, Samuel had the voice of God because he was lying down close to the ark. You don't hear his voice if he's far from you. He's a gentle spirit. The secret to hearing his voice is to walk with him. Don't keep him far there and say, Lord, where are you? No. So close, I believe you're holding me now. You never let me go. So close, I believe. Many fathers did not seek the consent of God. They just got pension, two million. Just travel to the village. You travel to the village, the second day your legs stop working. The third day you started working, halfway the building, the money disappeared did he lead you you must learn to take responsibility allow his voice guide you see let me tell you something god is not always speaking i know we say god always speaks i don't have a right to question anyone saying that but i've read my bible and i've walked with the holy spirit god does not always speak he speaks read your bible in the fifth day of the tenth month the word of the lord came the word of the lord came like a messenger god sends his word before his senses is with him when he sends it it comes your job is to wait no matter how long waiting is cheaper than paying a price unnecessary god is speaking to someone here because your your head can move you as the voice of god waiting the hardest things for believers lord you said this year you will prosper me what is this you've not even given me an idea a business idea and god says just be praying just be waiting oh god by now my colleagues have started ministry and all of them even have five five hundred members huh i look at all of them and it's as if you didn't call me i got them born again and god says just wait 
if you don't hear his voice die there waiting for him are you hearing what i'm saying i'm giving someone a powerful powerful revelation man of god if he does not speak don't start this tv ministry don't say because you have money not every door that is opened is opened by god you shall hear a voice satan can open doors your force can open doors when you force a door it will open there are too many inconsistencies in the life of believers and the reason is because of that stillness stillness the holy spirit does not speak to men under an atmosphere of noise 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 lord there are 12 men around my life tell me quickly which one truly you won't hear anything the holy spirit is a master of solitude silence silence oh god five jobs speak quickly before i choose my own you won't hear that kind of thing no. waiting is a sign of faith waiting is proof you believe he will come he will come and save you he will come and save you say to the weary heart your god will surely come who am i singing to save you my god will come and save you he will come and save Say to the weary heart, your God will surely come. He will come and save you. He will come and save you. He will come and save you. Here's your part now. Lift up your eyes to Him, for you will arise again. He will come and save you. Listen, lift up your eyes to Him, you will arise again. He will come and save you. Apostle, I was never taught that God can direct people. Look at how 10 years of my life has become a mess. I married wrongly. I did all kinds of things. I entered into every wrong known business. I did every kind of thing. Wrong friends. Look at my life. Lift up your eyes to him. For he will, you will arise again. And he must come to say. No regrets. Is there hope for a tree? Yes, there is. Even though it be cut up, if you can lift up your eyes, I just feel in my spirit God is speaking to someone here. You are saying, Can this thing ever work? My God, my God, an expert in changing the lives of men. Have you not heard of Abraham? I lift up my eyes to you. So I will rise again. You will come and say, Can my church get back again? Yes. You joined all kinds of friends in the name of ministry, preaching all around, and before you knew it, that grace left. But like Samson, like Samson, you will arise again. Okay. You will arise again. For he will come and save you. I speak to your weary heart. Your God will surely come. How long? His time. His time. How long, Apostle? We've been building for 10 years. Our neighbors are finished. Leave your neighbors. He's preparing a table for you. Lift up your eyes to him. And you will arise again. He will come and save you. Psalm 23. Please let's hurry up. Our time is gone. Goodness. God is 
blessing and healing people here psalm 23 god is encouraging someone stop crying you can't cry forever there is hope there is hope you can start afresh again i don't care what happened the lord by his spirit is my shepherd the sheep does not have horns the sheep cannot fight its security is entirely based on his trust for the leadership of the shepherd two he maketh me everybody say he makes me when he becomes my shepherd when i make up my mind i'm not a small child yes but i will follow him sometimes we get too matured for his voice oh god you know i'm not i'm not a child again don't play all these games he makes me to lie down where for him to make me lie down means he knows where it is he searches for it and says son this is green your eyes is seem black but god says just lie down this is green pastures lord but based on what i was taught when i was in the university this is black and god says me lie down when you lie down all of a sudden it turns to green and people say how did you get it uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. every wise man knows the power of the leadership of the spirit you can't fake his leadership your life will be too ugly to pretend he's the one leading you a sign that is not leading you is perpetual absence of beauty and glory in every area of your life he leads me beside the still waters verse 3 quickly help us media he restores my soul all these are things that happen when he's shepherd he can be your lord you will not benefit from this you can make him your shepherd that if you are leading me lord i will follow i will follow you need to see how i talk with the lord and i tell him lord i'm not going from here brothers and sisters i can tell you how many people have given nice proposals wonderful things for the ministry to do but i know you ask everyone who is close to me if god does not speak i'm not going anywhere if after 30 years god does not speak this is where we remain as a ministry are we together i'm not under pressure to show ministry is growing everything that has happened here is a product of his wisdom the messages that have blessed people around the world it was a simple direction from god do not upload your videos do not sell your audios not at this season put them free online i will cause it to move like an angel to the nations of the earth look what god has done today you see when he speaks to you foolish things can bring powerful results because his voice is upon it He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. For, yea, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, how you got there is not important. The most important thing is that you are there. The valley of the shadow of death, what happens? I will fear no evil. Why? Is it because I already know what will happen? No, you are with me. Although I'm in the valley, if your voice is still with me, then I'm safe thy rod and thy staff they comfort me five thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies because i am close to you i enjoy the fringe benefit of being anointed with oil and then my cup runs over guidance believers please hear me let's return back to the place where the voice of god becomes the timing of our lives don't allow this scientific living fool you young man you are 30 years by now you should have three cars you should have three cars you should be married you should have um uh, what are some of these things again you should be in i mean i mean you you have a master's in etc etc 
the voice of God will make you look like a fool for a moment but the beauty and glory that will rise from his voice will shock people and they will say how did you do it I remember when we started out in ministry many people thought we were fools many people thought we were idiots but look at his wisdom look at his grace look at the mighty things that he has done you are here today as a product of his voice who will be in your life because you had well pray one minute lord correct my hearing i am determined to hear you i am determined to hear you lift your voice and say lord i no longer argue with your voice if you don't speak i'm going nowhere there is a way that cement right inside and outside make sure you are talking to the lord there is a way that cement right for a young man but the end thereof are the ways of death there is a way to make money that seems right there is a way to marry that seems right there is a way to get connection that seems right there is a way to do ministry that seems right but the end thereof will leave you with pains and regrets but when he leads you his voice comes with speed his voice comes with direction his voice comes with direction guidance yes very simple song yes that's my response to your leading yes how forever say of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer are you learning something tonight the fourth ministry of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer is renewal and transformation write this I want to teach you something powerful and then we pray renewal and transformation renewal and transformation transformation second corinthians chapter 3 verse 18 but we all second corinthians 3 verse 18 but we all not we some as many who are interested is is the destiny of everyone but we all with open unveiled face beholding as in a glass the glory of god the glory of god is the holy spirit he's called the glory of the father he says we are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the spirit of god the holy spirit is responsible for the transformation of men what is transformation a change of state that is caused about by a change of beliefs a change of values a change of paradigms listen carefully one of the major ministries of the holy ghost in the life of a man is to cause renewal renewal of your mind romans chapter 12 from verse 1 i beseech you brethren by the mercies of god that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto lord which is your reasonable act of worship verse 2 it says and do not be conformed the word confirmed is the word patterned do not be patterned after aeon the the word world there is the greek word aeon the thinking pattern that comes with the age do not allow yourself there is a pathway young people are taking that will land them in failure there is a way people are taking that will cause them to be mediocres in business in ministry whatever it is it says but be what 
transformed how through renewal transformation the process that makes you become like Christ experientially is called transformation transformation the Bible challenges us to have the mind of Christ challenges us to cultivate the mindset Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 it says let this mind be in you the word let is permit allow authorize this mindset this thinking this ideology this is the reason why the ministry of the word is important now let me tell you something about the word of God while I was preparing the Holy Spirit kept drumming in my spirit to correct this I want to correct something now the confusion that has come and has been in the body of Christ for a long time as to where the ministry of what we call the word and the ministry of the spirit because it's, it's, it's a thing of confusion for a lot of people now that I'm talking about the Holy Spirit in transformation many people are saying I, I think it's just the word of God there is a system and this is what I want to teach you listen there is the word of God as a person understand this are we together John 1 verse 1 in the beginning was the word there is the word of God as a person say the word of God as a person we know him our dispensation knows him as Jesus are we together we call him Jesus the Bible calls him the word of God Revelations 19 13 the man upon the white horse riding had a name his name is the word of God give it to us please Revelations 19 yeah I believe verse 13 it should be Revelations 19 13 let's look at it and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood what was his name is the word of God his name has always been the word of God so there is the word as a person his name is Jesus we know him as Jesus Jesus is the name that was given to him when he wore a human body angels don't call him Jesus in heaven they don't call him Jesus that, that's a discussion for another time the only time in the angel mentioned Jesus was simply telling Mary his name he shall be called this they don't call him Jesus read your Bible in heaven they don't call him Jesus every time they call him Jesus is because they are relating with man so that we are not confused as to whether there are many of them he is the Word of God a person but there is the word of God as a testament as scripture as the Bible the testifier of the person this is it look up there is the word of God as a person but there is the word of God as scripture a testament Jesus said that scriptures testify of him what we call the word of God as scripture is a compendium of the dealings of God with man to the end that we may understand the system of God's kingdom and see here by the help of the Holy Spirit the character of God in dealing with men to understand his system his person his agenda the word of God as a person the word of God as a testament a written document that speaks about the life the power the realities of heaven now listen to me you are transformed by scripture but only when the breath of the Holy Spirit is upon it when the Holy Spirit does not breathe upon this this did not fall from heaven this was published by Zondervan or published by any of these people they may not even be born again they just published a book I hope you know that 66 books are the ones that are given to us but there are many extra biblical materials that are still the historical documentation of the Apostles are we together now so there is the Word of God as a person the Christ himself there is the Word of God as a testament what we call scripture listen carefully scripture in itself cannot do you anything now this is the problem we embrace scripture 
yes we call it the word of god yes it is a testament testifying of christ but it should lead you scripture is only useful when the holy spirit is participating in the process of opening it up if you open scripture just by yourself you will be like the scribes the pharisees the sadducees so the unity of scripture and the spirit is what produces the living logos the rema of god it's not just to think that okay because this is the bible many people sit down and then they can look at this this is only as hallowed as the ministry of the holy spirit makes it in your life otherwise this is just an ordinary book an ordinary book that archives the teachings of this man we call jesus the bible in itself cannot do you any good it is the ministry of the holy spirit breathing upon the word giving life to it so everything you see in the bible he empowers you to believe it act upon it and delivers the result he is the power behind scripture the holy spirit is the power behind scripture you have to believe this there is a word of god as an information as a testament that reveals the life and the principles of the kingdom listen i've said it but let me say it again these words in themselves only educate you they can't transform you that's why a lot of people do devotional without the holy spirit and at the end of it they finish and they close the devotional many people do bible studies even in church there are many churches that do bible study for decades but there's no transformation in the lives of the people you know why because we're only doing an exegesis on a spiritual document in fact even what we call confession um i wrote something down here i said confession of scripture without the presence and power of the holy spirit is mere psychology confession of scripture without the presence and the power of the holy spirit is mere psychology it's the same thing that happens when you go to a yoga class and they're helping you to be able to train your mind to have some kind of transcendental experiences what gives life to your confession is that the holy spirit is back of it otherwise you are just speaking nonsense we mock ourselves and just speak ah, this and that this and that we jack ourselves and we ignore the ministry of the holy spirit words generally are powerful but they do not bring your desired effect until they are directed by the presence and the power of the holy spirit confession of scripture without the presence and the power of the holy spirit is mere psychology in genesis chapter 1 verse 3 we see that the lord spoke the word but the holy spirit was there before the word was spoken not after not during the holy spirit was there hovering around don't invite him after you have spoken everything you want to do and then you say holy spirit if there's any space for you no transformation part of the ministry of transformation is to produce in you the character of the spirit galatians chapter 5 you read from verse 16 down to 22 but for time's sake let's go to verse 22 galatians 5 22 look at what the bible says but the fruit of the spirit in other words the recreated human spirit that is in alignment with the holy spirit should produce these effects love joy you cannot love except by the spirit you can be emotionally attached to a person or a thing that's a natural thing even animals do it but you need the holy spirit to love agape undeserved love how about joy the bible calls it joy in the holy ghost joy unspeakable and full of glory it says rejoice in the lord always it's impossible to do this it says again i say rejoice a life of joy is a product of his presence when you are ever joyful is a sign that the transforming power of the spirit is at work in you brothers and sisters let me tell you when you see people joyful it's not because everything is working it's just because the spirit of god they have learned to walk with the holy spirit there are people here seated right now as i talk to you 
they've had bereavements they've not even buried the people but you see them happy they will be the first to hug you and shake you after service excessive sadness dullness is a sign that you are walking in the flesh so when they send you pocket money when you come for koinonia everybody knows that is the end of the month you got something or if your salary lands help me nigerians as soon as your salary lands everybody knows you dance in church and you do everything when you stand with your tie you wave it everybody should see but the moment they don't pay to see everybody say please clap is he not enjoying he should come and face what i'm going through no everybody say i will be ever joyful yes it's a product of the spirit be so joyful that men will be surprised when you tell them what you are going through because they'll say i never knew pastor you mean you've been going through this this is what you've been going through for the last three years yes joy unspeakable full of glory don't pull your mouth and frown if you get up in the morning good morning sir. no joy <laughs> Somebody was supposed to give you a job. You even gave testimony in advance and implicated yourself and then the job didn't come. Hi, oh God, is this how you disgrace me? So now I'm, I'm going to come for coinon. How will they? Joy. I am ever joyful. I'm a very, very joyful person. It doesn't mean that people do all kinds of nonsense and foolish things around my life all the time, but I'm ever joyful. When I see people who are happy and joyful, they look beautiful they look wonderful regardless of what they are going through joyfulness is not irresponsibility it's a sign of faith that you know things will change why we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen that's why when i saw that our mother singing a song and joyful oh dear what a wonderful mother some of you just come here and say look i'm i'm sad uh, we thank god for the miracle what then is the testimony he gave me two injections and uh, the needle almost broke but God gave me a miracle and we don't even know you are finished you just say ah, you are finished that's it what then is a miracle laughter do it good like medicine turn to your neighbor and tell him or her laughter do it good look at me prophesy to your neighbor and say please don't carry a load on your head god is not giving you some of us you are 20 years you are looking as if you are 90. what's the problem i'm the one sponsoring myself now what i say which of you by worrying can add are you aware that i have three children we didn't plan for the third one it just came so what school fees is now fifty thousand. i don't know what is happening in nigeria who is getting the high blood pressure no don't put tension around your life say myself relax god is in control say it myself relax god is in control let me tell you what the devil will tell you he said don't mind this nonsense apostle asked what we eat after this program we 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 know ourselves finish coin only i'm waiting for you listen remember what we spoke about carnally to be carnally minded what does it take god have you not seen people walk to others and say look emeka come god said i should give you 10 naira take go and drink tea with it you don't believe god can do that say i am not popular in coin only. who is talking of popularity didn't he say god said the all-seeing eye of God that can locate you and bless you. Don't always think people have to bless you with strings attached. Not everybody is a bad person. There are genuine people who can walk to you and say, God just instructed me. They will even allow you to explain it. Who are you, sir? I'm just obeying God. May that happen to you after this service. Please give it to us again we're hurrying up now fruit of the spirit let's find somewhere to tie it up peace 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 are you peaceful boisterous worried 
long suffering another word for patience there are too many impatient people listen you have to learn it don't say we are like that in our family we are too impatient you call somebody uncle will you send the money he says call me a little later after 10 minutes, he says, uncle it's me again i hope you are not offended of course he's offended 10 minutes there are some of us it's like you know how parkinson's disease is we if 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 we do, there, there is such tension you advise yourself create images and get tense by them you need to have patience lord i thank you i know that the devil wants to confuse me and put pressure in my life now but in the name of jesus i will wait for the promises of god nigerians are too impatient too impatient that's why we destroy ourselves overnight the blessings god creates we we destroy it overnight because of impatience gentleness i don't care what tribe you come from i don't care who trained you i don't care where you were you have to change and trust the holy spirit to re-engineer you to become gentle it is part of the ministry of the holy spirit a believer should be known for gentleness to be gentle doesn't mean to be a clown are we together now you know what we call gra gra hello that's the best way i can you know what we call gra gra you are into everything you want to that kind of life you will sap your energy profitless labor the bible calls it the labor of the fool he says where yet every one of them some of us are not gentle they say we are sharing zobo immediately you come where 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 are we before i scatter this place you are learning a bad attitude you go for weddings they say everybody just walk they are coming you are impatient first you are trying to be gentle later you say this thing you know, won't get it you push everybody around you are not reflecting listen listen you are not reflecting the character of one who the minister of the holy spirit is at work in his life this gra gra life has destroyed people say from today prophesy say from today i receive grace from god by his spirit to be notably gentle say to be notably gentle once you find yourself fighting over everything you are not gentle fighting over scholarship fighting over withdrawing money atm fighting over getting fuel fighting over buying kerosene fighting over the battle <laughs> goodness goodness benevolence the ease with which you supply joy and beauty to others is a measure of your goodness it's a character it's a dimension of God's glory goodness a quality of benevolence the ease with which you release things to bless others is a measure of your goodness giving is part of an expression of goodness some of us you see my hand look look at me what is this what is this what did you say I, I'm not getting what you're saying I'm not I'm, I'm not sure I heard what you are saying but anyway I'm the one teaching just follow my hands are you seeing this this is how many of us do tongue talking this is a reflection of our understanding about please keep it there keep it there media about goodness someone can be dying sir of course you are not called to feed the whole world you are not called to you are not Jesus but you should be able to make a difference you can sit down with hundred thousand and your roommates are crying for one cup of rice so that they can cook as a room not even as individuals and you just sit down and say Kai you know the way this country is you come out quietly listen don't laugh I'm very serious God is working on us this is our year of triumph you must change you smuggle yourself quietly down to PZ enter Peter's eat quietly and close your mouth as if as if nothing happened and return back if nobody has told you the Holy Spirit is telling you now is very bad 
now it doesn't mean please let me balance this it doesn't mean you go around inconveniencing people because i said they should be good because there are people whose lives are a perpetual nuisance to everybody you go to people's house go around begging everybody for money telling lies i've had people use over five six different phone numbers to call me as different people looking for money you see that truthfully speaking i'm saying it thank god i'm, I'm speaking and it's and, and it's on air people are following so let's let's balance it being benevolent it's not that people come and stand and say it's a right apostle say anytime i cry you should answer no learn the principles get financial dominion get the wealthy place meet edge me for impartation find find ways of exiting that realm of suffering don't inconvenience people please hear me if you are here and you are used to going to people's homes and becoming a nuisance to parents workers and responsible people who are making a meaning out of their lives you have to stop it you have to stop it don't go to people's homes expecting they must give you money you must go and fetch rice when you go to their house they must give you yam who are you no you don't behave like that learn to release open your hands and you will never be poor you close your hands you cannot even receive it is only when what is in your hands is given some of us are really stingy you are stingy you are greedy and you are selfish you have to change once it's not you consuming it to hell with anybody no you can't be that desperate for things that you are inconsiderate about the feelings of others oh I came to buy 10 bottles of water and sir i'm so thirsty it's just one more i'm sorry oh god will help you and you pack your 10 bottles and go you are very very heartless you cannot even say okay let me keep one for you i came before you i came before you many people will hear what i'm saying and say he's just talking nonsense remember i've taught you when you hear people talking these are the things that make your life excellent goodness let's finish up faith or faithfulness really the rendition there is faithfulness the quality of consistency and stability faithfulness it's a name that god is called he's called faithful and true 23 please meekness another word for this is humility another synonym is teachability two words combined meekness is a product of humility and teachability when you bring humility and teachability it produces meekness the capacity to learn the capacity to submit yourself to knowledge and information regardless of what you already know many people are not meek the bible says that we receive with meekness the engrafted word temperance another word is self-control a better word is self-restraint look at me let me teach you something not everything having said talked about giving not everything is acceptable there are some things collecting it is collecting your bet throwing away your bet right there are pastors for instance you don't have self-control you step into people's homes you know that this home the highest salary here is twenty thousand but you see them packaging hundred thousand to give you it's not like it's an instruction from god you are happy you get into a house three bottles of wine chicken and the rest say please is there pepper i i always like pepper you are not a responsible pastor don't act insensitive to people as though you are not aware no say myself, myself. Behave. behave one more time myself, myself. Behave. behave there is a time to collect there is a time to say thank you there is a time to pray on the seed Pr pray and sow it back preserve your honor huh there is a time to know that uh -uh, this is not collectible there is a time to restrain your mouth many of us have entered trouble we are still trying to manage today because our mouths were careless you opened your mouth and spoke over an information you were not sure of later you found out it was a lie now you are in trouble do you know you can earn a living just speaking correctly there are wrong things you utter with your mouth about people or to people that can cost you five years 
are we together now school of ministry yesterday we we're watching fella durotoye in one of our uh, we're on leadership and then we we're watching fella durotoye and he said something uh, okay no no not school of ministry i was actually watching him personally and he said something he said will your life become a key for your children or a padlock there are people you mention them they say you know him leave this office now i was going to help you but god over my dead body leave this office even god man they won't give you there are others they say i would have driven certain people but because of this the holy spirit is the custodian of the life of god it is in the office of jesus the son to introduce you to that life but the personality that holds that life within you is the spirit of god and that only in partnership with him will you have capacity to release the possibilities in that life it's called the fellowship of the spirit you must know this if you want to walk as a believer the holy spirit represents the ministry of christ now every time the bible says in christ it means in partnership with the spirit that hails from him i can do all things through christ in partnership with him the holy spirit is the custodian of the life of god and the one who makes it possible to release the potentials there listen to me very carefully you can be a possessor of the life of god but not a manifesto of the possibilities contained in that life there are two different things possessing eternal life by confessing christ is a fact has nothing to do with your feelings but walking experientially in the reality of that life has to do with your partnership with the holy spirit so he says grace and peace be multiplied to you through knowledge first peter chapter 1 verse 3 says according as his divine power has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness listen carefully according as his divine power has given us how many things all things that pertain unto life and godliness that all things was shrouded in a mystery called Zoe, brought by the holy spirit his very presence is the proof of Zoe in you he's the witness the spirit of adoption are we together now and then the bible says but they are accessed through knowledge according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness it says through the knowledge here is here here is the big confusion in the body of christ through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue the next verse says wherefore has he given us these great and exceedingly precious promises that by them by releasing them we may prove experientially that we are partakers of his divine nature haven't escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust so i have eternal life but that eternal life is a possibility potentially speaking is at work in me it will never stop the devil from buffeting you but in partnership with the holy spirit manifesting as various things including the spirit of revelation that paul prayed for in ephesians chapter one he was talking to people who were already born again but were not releasing the possibilities that came with that life and he says for this cause for as a as a token of my desire for you to walk in these dimensions i bow my knees to the father of our lord jesus christ that he may grant unto you the spirit of revelation wisdom revelation in the knowledge of him that your heart although has received eternal life that it be flooded with light are we together now then he says that you may understand the power that was exerted when he raised christ from the dead etc etc so i can be born again you can be born again but the reality of the implication of that life may not find expression that's why the bible says it is by grace available by grace but accessible through faith listen carefully available by grace but accessible through faith and the word faith there does not just mean believing the faith there is a summation of every partnership that you have to go through in satisfying the condition to release that so grace provides it faith hallmarked by your obedience releases it this is the equation of the believer's work 
if it's not available by grace it cannot be accessible so when we partner with the word of god we are not ignoring the grace of god we are receiving it our obedience is a token of our reception it is available by grace but received through faith so when i type it is not the law i know that my prosperity and open heavens has been available by grace but my obedience is a proof that i'm interested in seeing it work in my life god cannot assume you are interested you he gave you a will and your obedience is partnering with your will so working out your salvation is not the law it's called partnership it's called koinonia it is the token of your expression it is the token of your interest to god that you want to see everything in him find expression in you zoe the life of god received by many experienced by few received by many experienced by few there are many possibilities that are enshrined in that life number one the bible tells us it's an indestructible life maybe let me finish what i started saying before we discuss a bit i was talking about certain pillars are we together the fellowship of the mystery that comes through partnership with the holy spirit number four the reality of righteousness righteousness Kenyon defines righteousness as the ability to stand before the presence of the father without a sense of inferiority condemnation and guilt um i i agree with that except for the fact that righteousness is another name given to the nature of god the very nature of god at work in a human is called righteousness not just an ability to stand that is the effect of righteousness it's not righteousness the effect of righteousness is that the possessor can now stand blameless but that's not necessarily the definition are we together now righteousness the nature of god at work in me the authorization to be able to access his spirit righteousness number three number what number five is that in christ and christ alone is dominion a possibility in christ and christ alone is dominion a possibility please understand this this dominion thing people chorus around as if they don't need god without god dominion is a mirage dominion means exercising sovereign power over situations over circumstances and over the forces of darkness write it down dominion the ability to exercise sovereign power sovereign authority over situations over circumstances and over the forces of darkness is only a possibility in christ every other thing outside christ is negotiation and pacifism not dominion are you hearing what i'm saying if a herbalist tells you he's trying to drive a demon it's not dominion through the mysteries of the kingdom he will pacify the spirit it's called occultic pacifism that's why the demon can be angry again and say the sacrifice is over so you have to renew it but dominion is exerting sovereign control anytime any day and remaining there not renewed by anything listen there is no sacrifice in the village that is done once and for all are you hearing what i'm saying everybody come on this is africa talk to me africa there is no sacrifice that is done once and for all whether you are aware or not somebody goes somewhere smuggles himself into a shrine and renews it can be per annum, can be per two years, or can be per when the gods are angry. When they start manifesting, the priest will now say, The gods have not eaten, and you are eating. So people begin to die. And what happens? They slaughter a child or an animal and pacify. That's not dominion, that's negotiation. That's not dominion. Bishop Oedeko calls it a far above mentality. That's dominion. Where you are in a class that potentially speaking, you don't have any reason to relate with the vicissitudes here. 
and if at any point it comes listen let me tell you something about eternal life eternal life listen carefully eternal life is not a life void of challenges but it's a life assured of complete victory now thanks be to god who always always not sometimes now thanks be to god who always causes us to triumph the next time you say that you have the life of god don't think you are saying you have a designer watch a designer shirt no you are god alone from before time began you are on your throne you are god alone and right now through the good times and bad you are on your throne you are god alone listen if i give you a millionaire's atm and i say look for some reason for just trusting me i reward that trust by giving you an atm potentially speaking has more money than you will need in your life this is recession so an example with money is a very fruitful one it will help people understand are we together he gives you an eight year are we together now but for some reason you have to be trained to know that that eight year is a fact that there's money inside it's a fact that potentially speaking you have access now you may move around with your friend that you used to eat with before it does not stop that the fact that you are a current possessor of that atm experiencing the possibilities someone must be introduced to your life or a document must be introduced that is a map that guides you and says stand before a machine the name is atm and you slot it and you are patient the dynamics of the operation this is where knowledge and understanding comes and you can hold that atm forever and stand and swallow saliva in front of a shop that the atm can buy the whole shop are we together now now you are crying to the one who gave you the atm and he's saying i have made available so out of his love giving you the atm is enough but he sent someone to come and guide you but that person is so gentle it will take your cooperation so he says look we created this atm it's not like they gave us we understand how this thing works and he say no 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 no. i went to school just hold on when i am difficult this is what many people do so you hold this atm for years and satan comes around and tells you this thing is only a small card and he says it's a small card put it in your pocket and you put it in your pocket and move around this is what makes christ look weak in the life of men this is what makes the word of god look like it is of non-effect so in spite of the fact that this reality is a fact knowledge of the systems of god the provisions that have been made in place everything we do in the kingdom is not adding to what christ has done is accessing through partnership the mysteries of the kingdom that releases those possibilities so that after five years of working with god my life should be able to reflect more of god now than it did five years ago not just in terms of finances and all of that in terms of ascendance in the spirit i should not fear five years later what i was afraid of five years before I should not be a victim five years later of what I was a victim of before. No. I prayed for a gentleman here. I believe he's here. He was in the school of ministry. He had a dream. And somebody appeared to him in the dream, punched his hand, and he woke up physically with a punch with blood. Many years before, would look at it and say, Hi, hey, this is a serious issue. And go and shout like fools around. But when I saw it, I said, I want to touch it. Zoe the way this is not the issue of prayer there is an implication to the life i hold let my the life of god make contact with that infirmity the way god's life possessors of divine possibilities i want you to take away take your eyes away from your challenge if you want to believe this because that's what satan will use to mock you you are a possessor of that life why are you barren five years don't mock yourself and then you say it's true uh -uh. 
there is still a provision because to make sure that you release this life he still gave on to some apostles and prophets and look at all the provisions he put in place he gave you his life gave you his spirit gave you his word sent gifts in the body so that we are not without excuse if you fail you neglected the systems of god you neglected his life so you go to hell you neglected his word so there is no growth you neglect his spirit no direction you neglect the gift so no lifting anyone that fails in life listen to me it's not god he neglected the systems the life of god the spirit of god the word of god the gifts that he has sent just like there are people here looking at me who have never been interested in the life of god the life of God is the most superior reflection of his love and benevolence. More than giving you a pastor. More than giving you a prophet and apostle. More than giving you the Bible. More than giving you whatever it is. You have to receive them in that order. You don't receive his life. Even if you receive his prophets, you will not maximize your stay. The prophets can only assist as guided by God. They cannot impart life. A man of God can impart every other thing aside from eternal life. I can impart healing. I can impart an anointing. I can prophesy to you and your life will change. But I cannot say be born again. I can even stand before God to declare your sins forgiven. Right? In terms of the limitations that stand between you. But that is only a possibility in Christ. Please, I want you to believe this. This issue of being born again is not a choice. It's not a choice. People buy phones now. Their phones get missing and they cry for days. Because owning a phone now is almost not a choice. Let's institutionalize salvation. Let's make it part of the fabric of growth. To make it look like you don't say, okay, if you want to, you want to, you better come out. Whether you know it or not, you want to. Are we together? Eternal life. What you believe about Jesus is important. You must believe that he came from heaven. If you believe he came from Israel, you are not saved. You are not a child of God. There is a footballer called Jesus. He cannot save men. He can play football, but he cannot save men. Please, let's clarify these loose ends quickly before we continue. There are things you have to believe. Jesus himself said in John chapter 6, I am the bread that came from heaven he told us his location that he came from heaven you must believe that he came from heaven number two you must believe in his incarnation his incarnation is the mystery that made the world flesh the womb of the woman is that mystery the mystery that made the world the eternal word that was with God John 1 verse 1 become flesh many Christians don't know this you must believe in the incarnation not reincarnation incarnation if you believe in the reincarnation of jesus christ you are an antichrist incarnation incarnation the word became flesh number three you must believe in his humanity he didn't just come and die and went away he walked upon the earth partook of the weaknesses of men there is jesus the man he walked upon the earth the bible says he was in every way like us tempted yet without sin if you don't believe in the humanity of jesus christ you will shortchange yourself from walking in the fullness of the life of god you must believe in the dominion he exerted by means of the presence of the holy spirit in his life not by means of being jesus the son of god when he came upon the earth he stripped himself of his godship and submitted himself as a model to the ministry of the holy spirit so every result gotten in jesus life was not because he was jesus it was because he was under the influence of the spirit so that we are not without excuse the same spirit that made jesus the christ is the same spirit that will make jakes the christ is the same spirit that will make Ejimi the Christ. Is the same spirit that will make Joshua Selma the Christ. 
believe in the humanity of Jesus he demonstrated the sovereign power of God flawlessly above creation above principalities and powers he demonstrated to us in his earthly life that Zoe is a possibility are we together you must believe in the passion of the Christ theologically speaking the entire event that took place beginning from the upper room the communion where they received the Holy Spirit was where they had the communion are we together down to the experience in Gethsemane down to Pontius Pilate and Herod who used Jesus as a scapegoat to become friends they were enemies but Jesus look how powerful Jesus was even before he died he reconciled enemies then you must believe in every activity the mystery of the whip for by his stripes we are healed the mystery of the crown of thorns that was put upon his head an exchange for our dominion restored you must believe in the mockery that he received you must believe in the fact that he was on his way to Golgotha the place of skull as an exchange for us Jesus did not die on the road he was hung on a tree it was necessary that he had to be crucified if Jesus died and it was not by crucifixion he would not be able to take the sins of the world there are conditions to be able to take the sins of the world number one you must become flesh number two your blood must be sinless number three you must enact a mystery that transfers the sin of men to you and that mystery is called the communion the communion is not what Christians take in church the communion is a sacrament there's a theological name for it. it is called the doctrine of interpenetration the mystery with which two people become one is what is used in marriage two separate entities by covenant still different personalities but one in the spirit and that is enacted through the communion John chapter 6 are you getting blessed tonight John chapter 6 let's read help us media let's read verse 35 okay just for time's sake let's run to 53 just four verses 53 to 57 John chapter 6 53 Jesus is speaking now then Jesus said unto them verily verily I say unto you he's introducing them to the mystery that will make the sins of the whole world come into him you have to understand it's not just that he died for us we died in him so you need to find out how we entered him because Galatians 2 20 says I am or I have been crucified with Christ not just that he was crucified for me are we together Jesus died for me that's an act of love I died with him that's identification there are two different things it's not just enough to believe he did it for you you must believe that you did it in him that's why we are seated with him but we must trace where the journey started verily verily I say unto you except ye eat of my flesh listen carefully ye eat of the flesh of the son of man and drink of his blood what will happen to you ye have no life you are living physically but you are not a possessor of my life now to eat the flesh and to drink the blood is a mystery there is a prophetic act called communion a physical prophetic act but it's a language remember Hosea chapter 10 right Hosea chapter 12 I have spoken to you by the prophets I have used similitudes similitudes it's in the character of God to use similitudes what we call prophetic act a foreshadow an um, adumbration of something physical like he told Moses to leave the rod and that rod is Christ so it's in the character of God that's what I mean by the universality of his character is consistent both pre-old old new testament post new <laughs> hallelujah 54 who so eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath zoe there is and I will raise him up at the last day 55 for my flesh is meat indeed now this sounds like occultism 
so you have to understand my flesh is meat indeed and my blood is drink indeed 56 he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth aha he's now switching the parable for you to understand that he's not necessarily talking of physically eating he's talking about a condition of intimacy that can be likened to eating and drinking prophetically adumbrated by a physical activity to eat the blood the body and blood of jesus is not just to eat things no it is a dimension of intimacy that begins by accepting and receiving him so he says dwelleth in me and i in him eating and drinking is an adumbration of a system that gets you into christ and gets christ into you last verse as the living father had sent me now listen and i live by the father do you know what that means that means i ate and drank of the father so i now live in the father that same system that made me to live by the father it says so that he eateth me shall also live by me listen are we you are intelligent now jesus is saying the father gave me his life and he called how he got that life eating and drinking and he said the same way i ate of the father's life that means i ate of his flesh i drank of his blood to have his life so also that means we must understudy how did jesus receive the way number one he was born of the spirit of the father understand this he was born of the spirit of the father number two he was empowered by the spirit of the father number three he walked in obedience to the spirit of the father these three conditions translated to him eating and drinking he released the reality of the fullness of the life of god everybody look at me communion is more than bread and wine if your experience at communion stops at just eating bread and drinking wine you are carrying out a religious activity that is powerless the eating and the drinking only becomes powerful on the strength of your understanding it is your understanding that releases the life are we together that means hallelujah every day of my life i can be eating the communion when i do the i eat the communion certain things happen many of them we are going to look at it the bible says that we testify and we declare of the lord's death how do we declare of his death we died with him we are alive that means my being alive is a testament that he is alive when you understand all of these facets of this communion then you will find out you can release the possibilities that come with it healing breakthrough an invocation of the mystery of mercy i can spend all night talking about the mercy of god the mercy of god is a mystery that starts with sinners but is needed in the kingdom otherwise we will not attain that height mercy is a mystery in god that vetoes judgment in your life it has nothing to do with whether the judgment is legitimate or not the moment your life is in a situation where on legal basis the devil should prevail over you what you need is the application of the mystery of his mercy are we together remember when david took a man's wife are we together now david was a man who loved god he took a man's wife killed the man and when he had a man's wife a particular prophet came his pastor came and gave a parable he started with a parable and gave a parable a parable that reflected that a man bullied a man and took something and david said who is that man and he said you are the man you are the man do you know what happened the bible says immediately david repented and sought for mercy 
and I think it was Abner, his prophet. He said, ah, the Lord has shown you mercy and you will not die. Meaning the price for that thing was death. If David did not invoke the mercy like Saul, he would die too. So David did not become an heir to the throne and then a predecessor of Jesus because of perfection. The difference between him and Saul was mercy. There was nothing Saul did that David did not do. The difference was mercy. Mercy is only available in Christ. Mercy is a mystery that Satan cannot give. Mercy is a mystery that pastors, they can pardon, but they can't show mercy. We interchange the words. Mercy is a mystery. Mercy is not to be excused. Mercy is that they pay for you. So you enjoy the freedom, but at the expense of someone else's there are few men who can show mercy they can pardon you but mercy does not take away the price it only exempts you hallelujah tenants of the Christian faith unshakable foundations that will make a man remain in Christ doctrine will rise and fall denomination will rise and fall Technology will introduce sex and rise and fall. But after many years, you will still be standing. Let me tell you, if you ever fall in your Christian race, it's not because Satan prevailed over you. It's because your foundation was shaky. When you don't know what you believe, that make up your conviction. The day you meet with somebody who is an intelligent professor who studied Scientology, he will sit with you and use quantum physics to wash away your intelligence and make you look at jesus and say i never knew you were you were um buddha's mate it's just that you came ahead of him every religion acknowledges jesus but what you acknowledge him as makes the difference you acknowledge jesus christ as a carpenter's son it is true but you are still going to hell are we together now yes I believe in him and this is what I believe about him this is what the devil when he comes to your life he probes the dimensions of your convictions Satan is not a fool he doesn't come to attack men when he came to Jesus he started throwing questions the questions were testing how far and he found out ah every dimension there was a word basis that word did not come by mistake he went to the temple from age 12 he had been learning he had been building when satan comes to your life he will begin to throw issues around your life to find what dimension of spiritual reality has not become spirit and life to you that becomes his access point to your life satan cometh to me so he will come to everybody but he did not find meaning there is a possibility that he can find listen let me tell you something brothers and sisters you need to sustain an orientation in the spirit that defies every assault of darkness for instance the bible says while we look not at the things that are unseen but the things that are seen so if the devil wants to manipulate your senses to make you look like if you are truly in christ don't mind this stupid joshua selman and what he's saying if he's really in christ why is a and b and c happening the happening in your life does not change the fact that his life is in you Our eternal destinies are determined by the, whether or not we are possessors of that life. But the qualities of our lives on earth are dependent on the extent of our partnership through faith with the Holy Spirit in order to release those lives. So if I look at a man's life and his life demonstrates a dimension of spiritual possibility that is not in my life, aside from other factors like the election of grace and other things, it must mean therefore that there is a dimension of partnership he has sustained with the Holy Spirit that I've not been able to come into it. That's why a family can have five people. Their father can be a pastor, but the extent of their results will differ. Are we together now? Listen, when Jesus walked upon the earth, 
he was very specific with his actions he intended for certain things to be understood about his work on earth that's why he had to reveal himself to paul to document these mysteries although the disciples saw him when he resurrected he still was with them 40 days and then left them 10 days in the upper room to receive the holy spirit but even in the midst of that he still had to anoint a man paul of tarsus saul who later became paul to be able to articulate the mysteries paul calls it the fellowship of the mystery the fellowship of the mystery the bible tells us in the book of ephesians 1 2 3 that we are alienated from the life of god through ignorance alienated from the life are we together now not experientially walking in the fullness of that life listen tonight as we prepare to receive the communion i want you to come to terms with certain things number one you must have the brokenness and the unashamedness to admit that if there is anything in your life that is yet to reflect the fullness of christ it is not because of a limitation posed by god it is that there is a dimension of partnership with the holy spirit are we together that has not yet begun or has not yet come to fruition for you to experience that dimension you are only authorized to receive results if you can maintain that posture that my life and your life today is not a reflection of who god is but a reflection of how far we have chosen to walk with him it's an uncomfortable truth but victory starts from that standpoint either he lied or there's something wrong on our own part are we together so if there are witches appearing every night destroying your life you sleep and somebody appears now listen let me balance something to deny the existence of that possibility is another dimension of foolishness this is what sometimes we preachers do we say it does not exist no it exists you can only be exempted you can't stop it satan still has authority over the systems he's still the prince of the power of air he's called a prince the spirit that walketh in the sons of disobedience for a season he's still allowed what happened is that god created a mystery that exempts you causes are real they are still at work yokes are real they are still at work they will still attempt you and until your knowledge bails you out knowledge of what the systems of the kingdom bails you out you will still be a victim of them so when you come to me as a man of god and say sir somebody came in the night and slept with me i said that's nonsense no you are not being accurate you may have ascended a level of understanding that exempts you from that experience but to deny the existence of that thing is a joke what i can do is i can introduce to you what Christ gave to conquer it. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Lift your voice and sing unto him. Hallelujah. You have won. You're seated in majesty. Seated in majesty. You are the reason, King. You are the reason, King. Hallelujah. My life and my experiences are too small to limit everything God said about Zoe. If I live my life today dying of sickness, dying of failure, my life cannot be a model enough to say this is all that is contained in God. And I must have the unashamedness to admit that my limitations are not caused by the inability of God to produce that result. It's been encapsulated in the way. It should be a challenge for me that there is a dimension of understanding through the ministry of the word, the ministry of the spirit, and the ministry of his body. 
we are members of his body not just his spirit we are part of the body and the body as an entity holds possibilities so i can love jesus christ but i may not have been taught that part of his system is the introduction of apostles and prophets that can speak over your life that can make me walk barren of the possibilities of god but when i study through the word that there is a provision made like that then i can align myself to that provision and now begin to walk in a new reality tonight is a night of brutal admittance we have to come to a point where we admit that listen my father has not gotten a job for 20 years my mother has not gotten a job for 20 years it is not because god cannot release jobs it is because there may be a dimension either they have refused to receive his life partner with the spirit understand his word or discern his body these are the causes these are the things that are responsible for the limitations of people so what we are doing tonight is not why you will be healed what you are understanding now is why you will be healed this understanding is what gives life to the wafers the person who made the wine you are about to drink may be somewhere you bought the wine he was doing business the person who made the wafers you are about to eat he may even be an unbeliever he just had that christians eat this thing often and he said this is a stream of income and produced it so you are eating somebody's value you are not eating power it is your understanding that translates that mystery like water turned to wine between the water and the wine was a word when a word came it turned the water to wine it is that word that understanding that will turn bread to his body and the drink to his blood color does not matter whether the color is green or blue it's only red to affect your psychology even if this is what you take it is your understanding in the kingdom power is released through understanding not just motion you tithe it is not the money that brings the power is the understanding that gives life to the activity that's why Jesus said this is how you will build and the gates of hell will not prevail upon this rock the rock is not Peter the rock is a system upon this formula you will build never speak outside of understanding so the system is that you first understand then you act when you act out of understanding you are building upon a rock when you act void of understanding you are building upon sand the sons of Skiva showed us a graphic example of that they spoke but there was no understanding and he said Jesus I know he built upon a rock Paul I know he built upon a rock but you are just speaking that means you come and eat because you heard that Bishop Oyedeko blessed communion and people took it and all of a sudden people were vomiting animals and then you take it and as soon as you take it as you are getting home the same spirit comes again because it's not the ritual the understanding is where the power lies so Paul I repeat Ephesians 1 for this cause it's not enough that you have received the way for this cause I have to go the extra mile to bow my knees to the father of our Lord Jesus Christ that he may grant unto you that the Holy Spirit may reveal himself unto you as the spirit of wisdom and understanding so that you will know epignosis come into an understanding not awareness come into an experience where you and the information has become one when you understand this then you take that step and you find out that life is now released some of you because of this you will not even be able to hold the communion cup because you are now holding it now with understanding the demon that oppresses you has seen the light understanding gives life to the symbol remember the entrance of thy word give it light and understanding when that light comes that's what releases the power ordinarily you would have carried it and eaten and said can i take another one you see why paul rebuked the church in corinth they were not discerning the lord's body a time came when many of them started using the communion for alcoholism because they did not have a system of preserving this thing so they looked forward to communion services communion will always remain and then they didn't just take a little this thing this is just for social reasons and then 
to guide people financially but then you could have a big cup and fetch so there were people who would fetch and go and hide somewhere they didn't believe in jesus and they would drink and paul found out they were getting tipsy in the middle of an outpouring and paul said no you people should come we need bible study something is wrong you guys if you are hungry that's what paul said if you are hungry do what go and eat in your house don't come to the lord's house and violate his temple by eating he said for this cause this is it for not discerning for acting foolishly out of understanding many are weak many are sick many do sleep when was the last time you saw written in the grave of a man that he died because he didn't detain the lost body he said he died of cardiac failure for this cause so if i want to improve my life it's not all up to god the way is at work it's been available by grace but my partnership i must check the systems i'm ignoring i am ignoring the life of god like some of you are doing looking at me now not born again when you see people talk about get born again, say forget about them jared they are just hopeless people after all so, so, so sociology said religion is the opium of the masses that guy may probably be in hell now be careful are we together now hmm. don't 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 listen to junks you can write it and pass your exams but when it comes to your eternal destiny you must be serious you have rejected his life or you have rejected the ministry of his spirit you have rejected the ministry of his word you have rejected the ministry of his body these are the provisions made i want to ask you a question tonight which one have you rejected you can easily know it by looking at your life you have insulted every man of god you know by saying look forget it i insult every man of god we can all go to christ you have accepted christ you may have accepted his word but you have rejected his body there is a consequence a bitter one they are taken for a prey and none say it restore the bible tells us that there is a system with which god built his ecclesia the church he said christ is the chief cornerstone immediately you meet christ he introduced two ministries called the apostles and the prophets they are the foundations of the church if you do not meet them your building cannot grow the cornerstone is there you ignore them you build nonsense it's a system it's an election of grace which one have you ignored some of you have ignored have supposedly admitted the ministry of the holy spirit you like power you don't doubt even if somebody jumps up and hangs in the air you like it but you have ignored the ministry of the word thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path that illumination that comes through his word you have pay attention to what i'm teaching tonight you have ignored that boundary of revelation and you will find out that there will be a lot of charismatism around your life and you will know which one is witchcraft and which one is of god because there is no compass there is no the word of god is like a buffer solution it defines the dimensions of the operations of the holy spirit so when you are going out of it the word of god guides you and says no every manifestation must be consistent with the character of god there are people who have embraced supposedly the ministry of the word the bible calls them men who have come around the baptism of john and ignore the ministry of the holy spirit acts 19 remember have you received the holy ghost since you believed verse 1 and verse 2 they says we have not even heard whether there be any holy ghost and paul was surprised they were believers disciples going through bible study he said unto what then were you baptized they said the baptism of john and paul said no the baptism of john was a baptism of repentance to the end that they should believe on he that should come even jesus christ and when they had it the bible says they were baptized in the name of the lord and paul laying his hands on them they now received the ministry of the spirit of god right they prayed in tongues and prophesied the bible says there were about 12 of them acts chapter 19 1 to 5 thank you very much so it is possible to believe the bible just because you inherited it from your pastor but not walk with the spirit jesus died to make all these systems available 
his life in us exclusively given through the office of the Christ but released by the interaction of that believer with the spirit of God the word of God the body we teach a lot about the word of God we teach a lot about the spirit of God but we ignore his body Christ is the head he's not a head moving around that head has a body and he acknowledges that the body is part of himself and then in another mystery he calls that body his wife you don't ignore a man's wife and, leave, and then he will laugh with you the Bible said jealousy is the rage of a man so as you insult his wife simply because the wife is wounded are we together if a Jimmy's wife has an injury and you say because of that she's no longer a woman a Jimmy will stand close to her first before he will give you a slap you say by this little act let it prove to you that when I said I do I meant it I also said I mean it so the man of God may not be perfect but he's still part of the system when you criticize him you are criticizing somebody's wife and that man will react are you hearing what I'm saying for this cause I've taught it here go and get the teaching on the body of Christ I told you the mystery of receiving from the body of Christ was adumbrated in the parable of Samson Samson went to the Philistines and he gave them a riddle he said out of something weak came something strong and they could not decipher the parable he killed a lion and then bees did not know where to go and put honey they went to a carcass and put honey there meaning if you must enjoy the honey you can endure the smell so you come to a man of god who is temperous but look beyond the temper there is an anointing there is always honey in the midst of the carcass this is the mystery of discerning the body you have to ignore the limitations that are in people so if the pastor does not look like you you may see him a yopi person and babs as if is some of these touts around this these vegas guys he may be that may not be the best but the truth of the matter is that he may be anointed the woman may dress and she may be careless you know like i was teaching a school of ministry students yesterday and i told them i went for a program and there was a woman of god who was introducing something and kai i'm not somebody who talks about dressing but mm -mm, even till today it's too much it's, it's not it's not she didn't leave anything to the imagination very bad for a congregation very bad for a congregation i say it again very bad for a congregation anyway it happened but the fact remains that the woman was very anointed can you endure the smell because the honey is there it's a mystery how the bees endure the smell to pitch it there there is this treasure let me give you the new testament translation that treasure is hidden in the bible didn't say in vessels in earthen vessels so you may not like me as a person but why don't you look beyond the limitation and see that there is a treasure that's why there is no church that cannot bless me if you search for jesus you will find him i've ministered in all kinds of places i remember when we were coming back from ekiti when we met some of the the the, the men of god that prayed for us pastor jakes they could not speak yoruba that's enough to annoy me say what is all this i'm the one who needs the miracle i need long life that baba cannot speak english but is walking in an experience of a reality what do you think we did we looked for an interpreter there has to be an interpreter we found an interpreter who came and the man said we should kneel down now i have received jesus christ i am walking in partnership with his spirit i have received of the word but i discerned his body i would have said i'm a man of god i i was going for a crusade it was a powerful crusade mighty miracles and on the way we stopped and the man didn't even say you are pastors say kneel down first. really that's what he said and in yoruba he was just praying i didn't hear one thing he said but all i know is that that man was long he was living long enough for me to cover that grace which part of god's systems have you ignored please hear this message tonight is the answer to the prayer that demon that has oppressed you you have quoted scripture that's very good 
it's true that you are working with the holy spirit but your knowledge is limited but there is still out of his benevolence he has kept an anointing with a vessel one word go will set you free of 10 years of limitations but we will refuse and say look i know jesus christ by myself so you limit god's possibilities to only the revelation that the holy spirit and the word is permitted through your willingness and sometimes your lifetime may not afford you the dimension of revelation it takes for the result you need so you must tap into every channel that's what he meant when he told nicodemus you must be born of the water and the spirit otherwise you cannot enter you can see it but you will not enter seeing the kingdom is that it has come to you but entering it is becoming a testament of the reality so you can now say since i was young now i am old i have never seen the righteous forsaken no that thing was not a poem to be recited by everyone it was a man's testimony based on a dimension of possibility you have to make it yours before you speak otherwise you will keep mocking yourself this is what these unguided confessions that are not out of understanding will keep mocking us if ye are abraham's children you will do the works of abraham what was his work he believed god god told him something god said abraham i want to introduce a dimension to you i have not done to anybody and abraham believed god tonight is easter all over the world there are cathedrals there are ministries there are crusades packed full with the over two billion christians on earth attempting men of god there are tapes rolling all over churches right now every man of god attempting sincerely to reveal something that the people can take back about easter i brought to you a reality the bible says this is the record it was documented god has given us eternal life but this life is in his son and whosoever has the son has that life but grace and peace be multiplied to you through knowledge according as his divine power half not will half is a fact giving us giving us giving us every limitation in my life and your life is a revelation of something about the systems of god we have ignored or are still learning and have not come into that fullness when you know that you put an urgency to your pursuit for god for the more i know you the more i want to know you jesus more of you for the more i see your face the more I want to see Jesus, more of you. Shortly, we are going to take the communion. Please, those relevant people, let's station them. There are three mysteries that the Lord revealed to me that will be open to us tonight as we partake of the communion. Three. Number one. The communion tonight is an encounter with the spirit of revelation. We need revelation in our lives. We need revelations in our lives. Brothers and sisters, please hear me. We need revelation in our lives. The limitation of my life and your life is not dependent on Satan. It's dependent on how far I can access the dimensions of the possibilities that the life of God can provide based on the knowledge that I have his life only gives you potentials your partnership accurate partnership makes it an experience tonight as you partake of this let something boil in you that all men are equal in Christ but they are not equal in possibilities our possibilities are determined by the truths we have chosen to receive and the dimensions of the systems of the kingdom we have comprehended and so we must press hear what paul says he says this one thing i do forgetting the things that are behind i press 
there is something I need to know about death to stop being afraid of it there is something I need to know about poverty there is something I need to know about restoration there is something I need to know about fruitfulness the love of God is revealed when we study his systems the Bible says the invisible things of God right the invisible things are seen they are learned they are taught by the things that appear so I look at and say what what kind of a man is this that grants me access to his life sends his spirit to me causes men moved by the same spirit to document more information the apostles did not have a Bible all they had was the Torah right the Pentateuch the five books of Moses but now God has gone the extra mile for our generation because he knows evil and wickedness will increase and he has left a document to still help us and then in addition to that he has empowered men and women in the body so that we are not without excuse and what a joy the Lord has spoken to us this year that is our year of triumph that means we can walk with these systems of the kingdom and rise when I was studying I was just studying the passion of the Christ tonight and I was so touched looking at everything Jesus went through just for me just for me Jesus came and did it just for me just for me just for me Jesus came and did it just for me that's what he did tonight well the cross will always represent the love God had for me when the Lord of glory heaven sent gave all on Calvary just for me just for me Jesus came and did just for me so what is the implication of tonight I remember I remember his sacrifice while he was on the way to Golgotha the Bible says that there were certain things in the mind of God and Paul was given access to those things they were encapsulated in a document and Paul calls it a testament and then Hebrews chapter 9 Paul is speaking pastor Alpha already there Jesus knew that those things would be activated only at his death so they were prepared and when he died there was still ignorance and he started moving through holy men to document these things to say now you have access I have died for every will is not yet activated until the death of the testator Jesus died if he did not die eternal life will not be a reality he hung on that cross between two thieves a 33 and a half year old man naked there was no covering no he was naked and he looked at the world that he came to die for and the people yelled crucify him let his blood be on our children they were prophesying something that would really happen because his blood had to be on their children for them to be saved what was a statement of war was a prophecy let his blood be upon our children they didn't know that was why he was on the cross they mocked him let me tell you something Jesus did not go to the cross as Jesus he went to the cross as me and you when he stood there he saw me he saw Joshua Selman he saw Koinonia remember Acts chapter 2 they were caught in their heart and they said men and brethren what do we do he said repent for the remission of your sins and you shall receive that promise for the promise is unto you and unto your children and to your children's children he says as many as are afar of which the Lord will call this is where we came in in Acts chapter 10 reading from verse 38 down to 44 the Bible says the moment the Holy Ghost fell on all they that had him 
day of the circumcision the Jews said ah I perceive truly we now see that God is no respecter of persons but that in every nation whoever calls upon his name will be saved tonight we are taking the communion number one access to the spirit of revelation according to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 I bow my knees and I pray for you O church of the Lord Jesus Christ that I desire you to release the reality of Zoe that life that is indestructible that life that is far above principalities and powers the life that is capable of demonstrating dominion here and now the life that is characterized by victory the life of meaning the life of fulfillment the life of purpose but it's access through knowledge the spirit of revelation number two the second thing that the communion will release to us tonight is reenacting that covenant of life through that prophetic act that we are going to be doing the bible says he that eateth of my flesh and drinketh of my blood hath my life do you know what that means there are many things at work in your life now that were not sponsored by that eternal life watch this my body as designed by god is supposed to grow through a system there should be a symmetry and a synergy correct if a boil starts coming out from here that boil is growing not at the same pace with my body now biologically they can say something is responsible but spiritually we know that another life is responsible so the result of that another life i see it different from my body so what you do is by the mystery of the communion you are taking it to your physical body physical flesh and blood it's a mystery that reminds the devil that every part of you was handed over to christ that means whatever is not a derivative of the life of god put it scripturally every tree that was not planted by my father meaning there are other farmers are we together there are other what farmers for instance while men slept an enemy he's a farmer the bible says he came and sowed he's a farmer and left whether that sleep is a spiritual sleep psychological sleep as a result of the weight of the vicissitudes of life fatigue several things happening in your life and you did not know and it weighed you down or as a result of real physical sleep the activities of darkness listen as you take this i want you to discern the lord's body don't just to discern the lost body is not to eat slowly to discern the lost body is to take it with understanding it's not that you close your eyes you take it slowly no 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 that is religion to discern the lord's body is that as you are taking this truly speaking this is wafers this is wine but the, my understanding authorizes the holy spirit to form an eclipse between that that activity that dinner thing and me and as i lift it is the same thing as the servants who were carrying water while they lifted it the distance between his word and your mouth causes a miracle to happen this is what will make somebody hold it and just the distance from the table to your mouth you can't stand it an anointing responding to your understanding that's why somebody can take the communion and all of a sudden you feel you just took something small that before it got to your stomach a lot of itself was hanging around different parts of your body but all of a sudden you take it and you are already feeling fire on your leg did that thing get to your leg it's a mystery you only gave him space tonight can your communion be a body that you have prepared for him we have prepared a body remember a body has thou prepared without a body he cannot move so the communion just like the human body can become the body tonight that communion can be the hand that heals you tonight that communion can be the mystery that destroys the devourer for your non tithing and God can say I give you a clean slate start again tonight that communion can be a reversal of several things if you take it with understanding 
Are we together? So we are going to pray. But before we pray, overflow one, overflow two, by the road, those online, from any nation and any place you are listening to, the first key is to receive the life of God's way. The life of God is not Christianity. Christianity was a description given to possessors of that life. God is not initiating you into a religion. He says, come on to me. Listen, there are people seated here looking at me inside and outside. You are tired. And you're saying, apostle, as I stand right now, sincerely, I don't even know what my life is about. I have tried like the worship team sang. I've done everything. But tonight, I am in all humility, lifting my heart and my hands and saying, I need that life. My father refused to receive the life. My mother refused to receive the life. My brothers and sisters refused to receive the life. I choose to receive that life. And there are yet others who may say, at one point, I came for an altar call. But sincerely, I don't know the name of what I did. I only know that they said congratulations and they gave me hamper. I ate what was inside, but nothing entered me. And this night, I want to eat of my the bread. He said, my bread is, my body is meat indeed. For in the sanctuary, God is near. Oh, come lay down the burdens you have carried. For in the sanctuary, God is here. Wherever you are, just wait till I start counting before you come. I'm going to count one to five because of time. There are people here who are saying, Apostle, as I sat listening to you, I knew that I had to be sincere with myself. And I knew that I have to win this war my life does not reflect the way in any way number one i have not even received it every time i hear preachers talk like saul of tarsus i mock them and i say they are wasting my time but tonight i want to win that one and number two there are others who said well i know that i came and confessed something for a while i was even walking with god but sincerely i know between me and god right now that I'm not serious with him and I don't want any pretense again wherever you are the Holy Spirit is already speaking to you overflow one two wherever you are I want you to make your way here I would have asked you to go to the overflow outside but there is a reason why I want all of you here so as I count one to five there are people there I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain leave your seat and come out here right now if you are ashamed of your friend you are ashamed of your brother you are ashamed of your sister then you are wasting the mystery of easter start coming one god bless you leave your seat and come don't be ashamed clap for them koinonia appreciate them as they come god bless you keep coming that flows from help me see emmanuel's faith coming lose all their guilty strength. the third mystery that you will receive tonight from the communion is an empowerment for a strange order of dominion please don't forget these three things don't forget these three things. Number one, access to the spirit of revelation. Number two, an exit of everything that was not planted by God. There will be mighty, mighty miracles and deliverances as you take this. Number three, an empowerment for a strange order of dominion. The centurion said, for I am a man under authority. I say unto one, go, and he goeth. I say unto another, come, and he cometh. Speak the word only. 
the Bible says where the word of a king is there is power that as you partake of this communion something will come upon you the Bible says that when you take it right first Corinthians 11 when you take it that you announce you declare the Lord's death the meaning of that is that you tell principalities and powers that the person you used to know is not the person now Jesus died and I died in him and now the life that I live I live by the faith of the Son of God another system so way God's life now this is what we are going to do I'm going to give you two prayer points we are going to pray seriously and um, everyone outside you don't have to come there are the first overflow at the projector there is a provision like this the second overflow at the projector there is a provision like this and then in here we did it because of time now this is all you are going to do those here you would come this way just take the cup and the bread drop the cup there and march this way those here you will do the same thing and then i think there'll be a provision here at the minister stand so that we don't have chaotic things please some of you will fall under the anointing as you do it just be careful and let's just coordinate them i want to pray and bless this now and then we are going to pray the moment you partake of it you go back and find a corner and begin to blast in tongues and pray these three things in your life that's happy stuff for you you have to pray it with all your heart and say lord i understand this mystery let my understanding permit the life of god to find expression prayer point number one Lord I believe I believe but in case I do not believe help my own belief lift your voice and pray whatever is not of faith is sin lift your voice and pray pray inside and outside pray inside and outside Are you praying? Help my own belief. Emmanuel. 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 Your name is called Emmanuel. Your name is called Emmanuel, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. point number two Lord as I partake of this let the mystery of the communion be enacted in me whatever this represents I permit it to work in me lift your voice and pray seriously inside outside those online get bread and get wine or water get something that represents the communion hallelujah hallelujah please listen i want to pray for the communion first corinthians 11 from verse 23 the apostle is speaking and he says for i have received of the lord that which i also delivered unto you that the lord jesus listen that same night which was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take eat this
this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me 25 after the same manner he also took the cup listen are you seeing the order so you take the bread then you take the cup he took bread and said eat then he took the cup and he says this is my blood of the new testament do this as often and then he says 26 for as often as he eats this bread and drink this cup ye do show the lord's death till he comes now he says for this cause verse 30 many are weak for not partaking of this with understanding many are weak many are sick and many among you sleep meaning if i partake of it with understanding among other things it should destroy weakness it should destroy sickness and it should destroy death that's the next prayer point lord weakness sickness and the plague of death any kind of death it lives my life now lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray victory victory over sickness weakness death hallelujah hallelujah now please agree with me i want to pray i tell you i sense such a strong anointing in this place i'm praying here at the projector stand everywhere those online regardless of any nation just go and get something water wafers food whatever is just a token who can stand against the lord no one can no one will who can stand against our king no one can no one will oh Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ father tonight I stretch my hands prophetically in the name of Jesus Christ upon this communion this is ordinary wine and wafers but Lord we command it to lose its earthly significance now and take on a heavenly significance and lord i pray using this as a point of contact to every other communion set around the world connected to us now i decree and declare that this becomes a type and a shadow a similitude of the body of jesus a similitude of the bread the blood of Jesus Christ and Lord I pray that as we partake tonight we access the spirit of revelation as we partake tonight every stranger in our life must go immediately and Lord as we partake tonight fresh fire for dominion and trial in the name of Jesus therefore Lord we declare this blessed we call it blessed right now i put the word of god upon it and i declare that it will produce miracles in the name of jesus god bless you please start coming start coming quickly worship him help us let's just have some people come and stand open it up and then Victory belongs to him. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. Victory belongs to Jesus. 
Nada o kaka sunanka O bangi chika isayabo Na kirma ma sunanka O bangi chika Nada o kaka sunanka O bangi chika isayabo Na kirma ma sunanka O bangi chika Quickly, 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 quickly
Coordinate them, protocol coordinate them, please. There's a lot to do. If you are coming, double up, please, quickly, quickly, quickly. Let's save time. There is no other name like Jesus. There is no other name. No, no, no. There is no other name like Jesus. Are you praying? There is no other name. Are you praying? No, no. There is no other name. Yes, you are. You are the only living God. Say, and you are the only living God. Yes, you are. You are the only living God. I say, you are the only living God. Yes, you are. You are the hey. only living God. I say, you are the only living God. Yes, you are. You are the only living God. Hey, I say, you are the only living God. Yes, you are. You are the only. I say you are the only living God. Yes, you are. You are the only living God. I say you are the only living God. Yes, you are. You are the only living God. We praise you. 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 We love you, 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 living God. Yes, you are. You are the only living God. Hey, you are the only living God. Yes, you are. You are the only living God. You are the only living God. Yes, you are. You are the only living God. I say you are the only living God. Yes, you are. You are the only living God. Hey, I say you are the only living God. Yes, you are. You are Only living God, yes, you are. You are the only living God. I say, You are the only living God, yes, you are. You are the only living God. We praise it, 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 we love you, we love you, we love you, we love you, we love you. 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 I adore 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 you. 
Let your name be glorified. Hey, you are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. You are the Lord. Oh. You are the Lord. Let your name Let be glorified. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. I say you are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. I say you are the Lord. Let your name.
Africa, you know the man, oh, you know the man. Now you be God, oh, now you be God, Almighty God, Almighty God. You know the man, oh, you know the man, oh, you know the man, oh, you know the man, oh. Now regale, now regale, now Hallelujah. Lift your hand. Something is happening to you. Something serious is happening in your spirit. Lift your hands. You reign, you ancient Zion is king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, thou fountains of the deep. And we, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Hallelujah. Right now in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, I command a baptism. You have taken something in your body of the spirit of revelation. One, two, three. Take it. Take it. That fire upon you. Illumination. By the mystery of communion. Step into a new dimension of light, of illumination. I command your spirit man to comprehend with all the sense, the length, the breadth, the height, the depth. I call your spirit man rise higher, a higher dimension, a higher dimension, a higher dimension. Mantles are falling here tonight. Mantles are falling here tonight. All the kinds are rising from the gates of the church. The poor us are rising from the gates of the church. For the kings to be born, for revival to be born, for revivals to be born. For the kings to be born, hey, Ali, Ali, oh, Ali, oh, Ali, oh, Ali, Ali, oh, oh, Ali, Ali. Now listen to me. Any stranger in anyone's body now, whether by covenant, whether by sickness, right now as I speak, let the mystery of the communion speak now. I command judgment, every sickness, blood disease, covenants, right now, every tree not planted, help that lady, by my father. Let it go now. Let it go now. Terminal diseases, yokes of delay, limitations. 
I command it to give way right now. Ah, I tell you, there is a strong impartation in this place. I want to activate upon you a grace. Listen, the Bible says, Rule thou in the midst of your enemies, rule thou that they may come against you in one way, but that an unction from the most high can be upon you and scatters them a thousand ways. The Lord has declared that it's a year of triumph. You are about to receive something that will make you run like Elijah. I pray for you. The mantle of strange dominion, strange dominion over principalities, over circumstances. Take it now. Take it now. Run like Elijah. Run like Elijah. Take it now. I release that mantle. I release that grace. No limitations. No limitations. Breakthrough. Dominion. Breakthrough. In business. Breakthrough. In career. Breakthrough. In academics. I command it by the spirit of dominion. Hear me. Anyone here who is a man of God, you are in any kind of ministry, may an unction for kingdom authority let it come upon you right now. Take it now. Take it now. Grace. Kingdom authority. Take it now. Dominion. Let that fire rest on your ministry. Let that fire rest on your church. Let that fire rest on your assembly. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that everything Jesus died for and is not yet manifest in your life from tonight I give the devil no rest may your eyes begin to see the salvation of the Lord may your eyes begin to see the salvation of our God I pray for every family represented here and I prophesy enough is enough of every demonic assault therefore tonight by this communion I release judgment I release vengeance I release judgment I release vengeance I release judgment I release vengeance whoever has partnered with darkness to keep your family bound this night as Jesus died in exchange may the earth open and swallow them may the earth open and swallow them the kind of results that your hands have not handled I pray for you that in the next 30 days as surely as the Lord lives by the mystery of the death of this Savior of us step into that dimension of results step into that dimension of results hallelujah buried with him in baptism we died with him and when we resurrected we resurrected to a new life whatever makes the reality of eternal life to not speak in your life I decree and declare right now that that barrier is broken forever finally I pray for you 
the anointing to bring others to this experience the unction to walk in the reality of the life of Christ to walk in healing to speak breakthroughs to people I stretch my hands upon you like the dew of heaven let it fall on you right now let it fall on you right now let it fall on you right now right now is yours take it let it fall on you right now like the dew of heaven the unction to demonstrate the kingdom the unction to demonstrate the kingdom i release it for you right now Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain